Hello, Daniel. Good morning. Um, I'm actually uh, restarting. The, the, the very previous one was really bad. So I didn't remember a bunch of things that were important. I can do better, so... It was the interesting part already, but um, we'll get there quickly, I think. <clears throat> I had a terrible night, so like I didn't sleep very well. Let's hope it won't influence these very much. Yeah, I'm restarting. The, the the previous one was really bad. It's gonna be quick. I'm just gonna hopefully play smarter, better. Simply because I now remember a bunch of things that I didn't remember. So, like... Uh, and I played poorly, so... <sighs> yeah. So, um... Let's change the ministers. But no wonder, like... I don't play this for ages. Forget about counter spying. I need to. Yeah, forget about counter spying and then I put it to the maximum. <clears throat> right. Trying to think if I should upgrade these these units. I definitely don't want them um, reinforcing. <clears throat> this will give me some practical, which is going to speed up everything. The research. So screw it, let's do it. But then like it's it's like kind of a waste because uh, my infantry right now sucks, so the the units coming out of there will suck balls. Will have to be upgraded. But we get some practical going. And that's gonna be good. So this is the capital. Let's bring the headquarters to the capital to save supplies. That's another thing. If I keep these dudes around, I'm gonna have to pay su supplies for them. It's fine. <clears throat> I think that's all. Let's unpause. I'm trying to remember some odd keys if the I think that's all, so let's unpause. Wait for our diplomatic influence to grab to make a peace deal. Uh, not be still damn it a trade deal with Japan or 
are these dudes? Um, since our relations are at zero, if they, they're willing to buy fuel, which usually they are, they've got the money, I'm gonna grab more money off of them than if I sell it to Japan. So, they will give me 0.56 money. Japan, we've got a decent relationship. So that gives me less money. It's not a big deal. For sure, the mysterious 98, welcome. I hope you enjoy. So, let me slow down this a bit, just slightly, for that pistol to be done. We're making some money, that's gonna be really good because this is going to be extremely exploitive with regard to manpower. As I've showed yesterday. No, what am I supposed to do ST bed? Wow, that started early. Civil war in Spain. Let's try to sell some stuff to Japan, some supplies or, you know, anyone. I would rather sell them to these dudes. But I can only talk with them on the 9th of January. Please buy some supplies. They don't have money, so they won't. So I sort by money, try to find someone that actually has some money and is willing to buy my supplies because I really, really, really need money. luck let's wait for the next day I think this dude should buy supplies this is a bit tedious but money is incredibly important for my strategy to work. Without money, I'm, I'm stuck. Hello, Flatland Badger. <clears throat> Myself included. Don't play this for years. So much so that I had trouble remembering a bunch of stuff. I used to know this game inside out. I still remember many, many things, but... Oh, there you go. It's not going to be very easy to to uh, produce shit and you know build units and actually also have I see for those supplies, but 
like I said, I need money really, really hard. I think we're, we're good. If they don't cancel this deal, uh, we're making over one bucket, one ducat, one dollar per month. Okay. Now I'm gonna switch the. And I have like twenty diplomatic influence, so that I'm on the so that I'm on the safe side. I will um, switch this to spies, so that we start increasing our national unity, in order to grab the best units, best laws. Damn it. You love the armored car run. Cool. Ah, you're not very far from the truth, the mysterious one, 98. <laughs> Alone years. Yay, the chat is lively. Yay for that, seriously. Jeez. I've just started playing. Really good, really nice. Um, trying to de decrease the neutrality as fast as possible. And that means sending some spies to the UK. I'm gonna try. We're gonna try to attack them. So that's why I'm, I'm actually building some units. Slowly, very slowly. spies or something I will switch this back to switch this to research okay that's good enough for now so let's start the research I'm gonna go with industrial efficiency first I'm wondering if I should go with education too an extra 5% leadership will be good. So I'm researching small arms first. And light artillery. Operation level organization will follow. Actually, that should be the priority. I'll have to go to our first thing, 1938 or end of 1937. So the neutrality is now going down by minus 20, 0.27 per day. this game because I was playing Czechoslovakia and I couldn't do anything. 
because this game is a simulator, so you have big limits. Yeah, but in indeed, and this I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to do anything as Tibet either if I didn't cheese for the manpower, if I didn't exploit it. Really, really hard. Not sure that's worth it. Right now, that is, it's worth it. But right now, that's what I'm talking about. Yay, first brigade of infantry that we build. I'm still trying to focus everything on, on um, production. I'm not sure how to proceed yet. I'll show it. There's two exploits at least. One, I won't do it uh, right, I won't do it because it's more complicated, but I did it in the past. You can see it in my original Tibet run, like five or six years ago, around five years at least. Um, this one, I'm gonna use a different exploit, that's way easier to use, less convoluted, but. Um, it depends on money. While the other one, we I didn't depend on anything coming from the outside. I could generate manpower by spending IC. But the IC is precious, so... Money is kind of precious, but not as precious. It's precious in the beginning because I need licenses like landing crafts and stuff like that. Wow, look at that practical. <laughs> Jeez. I built one brigade, but I gained nothing. Yeah, the Lord... Um, the Lord... Um, the conscription was the less practical we gained from reserves, if memory serves, from building reserve units. first Tibet Let's Play. In the beginning it was a nightmare moving troops in low inf infrastructure desert for you. And I remember how you encircled the capital of that country near your border to leave his ar its, their army out of supply. Exactly. I have to do that again. Did you sell some supplies I did? So if you want to see the other exploit for manpower, just search uh, Warmongering Tibet, uh, Hearts of Iron 3, Marku, and I think it's just Warmongering Tibet, Hearts of Iron 3, and you'll see it. It's a very old series. Like I said, like it has many, it was like f at least five years ago. But I was not happy with the ending. Not sure. I don't think I. I think I gave up on that series at one point with the, almost the entire world conquered, but I don't remember. People stopped watching. They didn't probably enjoy it. I don't know. Maybe. 
they were tired of this game already, I don't remember. Maybe it was just me, I'm boring or something. I don't know, don't remember. So everything's going well. There we go, production. I can choose switch the lawns or economy. I won't touch the drafting laws, especially strain. <clears throat> I think I need, I need to continue to build infantry, even if they're shitty. Oh shit, I don't have supplies. Hmm. These dudes are gonna cancel their deal. That would be bad. This has to be extremely exploitive. Without exploits, this, this would be like extremely boring, nothing to do. They really want to give me rare materials, but I want what I want is energy. There you go. Still no practical. <laughs> awesome. Well, at least you've got three brigades. See why I don't deal with small countries, they're always cancelling the deals. That was a big problem back in the day. I don't know, let's just add some more infantry to the queue. I need to keep making... units. Even if they'll be shitty, and they will be shitty. put as, as little I see as possible into supplies production. Like breaking even and that's it. Okay, that should give me just slightly more than... Which is fine. I had, I had a blast with playing as, as nationalist Spain. But, like, I, I played as Spain when I was still not very good at the game. I was getting there... I don't mean anything by that. It's just that nationalist Spain is a very strong country. That's the only thing I mean by that. But um, I had a blast when, uh, at one point, oh wait, I'm misremembering it too, because at one point I played as Spain, as nationally Spain, or, or was it, or was it the, 
the communist Spain, whatever the name is, uh, Republican Spain. Like, I play this then, so I watch the AI play. Um, while watching the AI play, right at the moment where the dude was, was gonna be annexed and had just one province left, I took over. And then I had a blast conquering Spain back. And then proceeded to conquer Europe at least. I had a blast. First deck. Let's just ditch these ones. And add the new ones. That's still gonna take a while, so let's add some more begins. to run out of of energy unfortunately don't be a dick give me the energy thank you Good, good, really good. Hey Japan, do you have metal? Sell me some nice metal. Um, sure, we're making lots of money. an eye on the spies. The uh, efficiency should go back to the top. Small, arm, small arms should go back to the top too. These units are really going to be so shitty. I'm not doing counter spying on the British, which uh, uh, you know increases the, the the mortality mortality for my spies. Hello, Mike. Welcome. That was a long time ago. 
the Albania run. That was one of my first if memory serves. Or I think yeah, it was one of my first runs. I can't trade with the Soviets. Another brigade. Oh, this is sad. I'm gonna run out of energy. guys are being dicks, don't want to sell it. I guess I could have done this better somehow in the beginning, try to find a source of energy, but... Like from the UK. Six to five, I see. Or we don't convert any longer, so that's fine. We still have we have a, a nice supply of oil, of a, of a fuel. I mean, of supplies again. Also practical. Wow, just pathetic. <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> I'm not... Oh, all right. <laughs> Good joke. I usually only need like five hours a day. And I'm usually fine, usually. There you go, we're enjoying some glorious Glorious 4.75 leadership. It's a new year. Usually we have some more, some new politics. Uh, with every year, there's there's a um, a chance we might grab a new 
if you, new politics. Does this even do anything for me? Like the base I see is five. Ten percent. Extra ten percent of five. It's just point five. I don't think this does anything, like, seriously. Because they're so small. Usually this is a no-brainer. I suppose now it's just stupid. Let's, let me check it. I'm willing to, to check it out. You see... Still the same six I see, and I, shit, I'm asleep. Not what I want, an idiot. There's one that gives extra supplies, or there used to be. Oh well. Yeah, I'm an idiot, so... Anyway, so slowly it's starting coming back to me. Slowly. Very slowly. Usually that's a no-brainer for bigger countries, but for, for Tibet that's just silly. Eventually, you're going to get bigger. Okay. Um, thank you, Wes. Uh, good luck with your work. Let me see how many people joined for today's stream. I can't see it. Just curious. Let me just save this before this crashes or something. Okay, 22 people, not bad. Like, for an old game like this one, it's quite impressive. So, not bad. Thanks, the mysterious one. In my dashboard it says 22, so... Um, so where was I? I need to pay attention to the spies. It's like... If I put one tick on counter spy, my spies will last longer inside the UK. But if I do that, the neutrality will drop slightly slower. And I want it to, to drop as fast as it possibly can. that light artillery back to the top I suppose so I'm going heavily on the industrial efficiency tech to try to speed up production I'm gonna have more units but they're gonna be shed they're really gonna be obsolete well, it's not like these dudes have uh, cutting-edge technology anyway. Uh, 
Look at that nice money. Thank you, thank you. I think. Yeah, thank you. It's gonna help. I have some spare energy, actually. Some spare fuel. These dudes are probably willing to buy fuel. Nope. No, it would be nice because I would stop selling supplies. That's true. That's, um, that's being an issue. I think these, these dudes will buy fuel. Oh, they will. They will. Interesting. Thank you for the subscription, Flatline Badger. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the support, man. You use different viewers counter, I don't know. I really don't know. It's the dashboard. My dashboard says 24 people now, so maybe it's frozen, I don't know. I can't refresh or else Hearts of Iron might crash. Hello, Tiro. This is quite a nice surprise. I'm glad you enjoy it, thank you. So... Uh, Guanchi wants to buy, but I'm a, like a derp sometimes. Let's see if I press the right button. I probably did. It's like I usually don't trust these dudes because they're unlikely to, to cancel the deal. I'm selling it anyway, let's see what happens. Let's see if we can buy energy. Energy? If I wanted, I could already declare war on on um, the UK, but that would be stupid. I still have a deficit, sure.
I'm going to cancel this one because they're running out of money. That means they'll cancel the fuel deal, which is the one that I would like to keep. Because I don't really need fuel, but I do need the IC. That I can use to build units. This is a problem, I'm not investing in, in the doctrines for infantry. Those will have to come later. Everything else is, is going nicely. I think I'm gonna be ready for 1938 or late 1937 war against these dudes or these dudes I'm not sure can I <clears throat> yeah it has to be these dudes first there's no infrastructure if the infrastructure is level one I can't walk over it it needs to be at least level two so we have a border but we could be permanently at war that uh, no hostilities will happen unless someone improves the infrastructure. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Leviathan. Welcome back to your room. added a bunch of brigades. Let's remove them because that just grab a tech that improves the quality of the troops. So it's actually, I was talking about energy being coal, and it's actually what it, it is. Coal. Over there it's just called energy, but over here it says specifically coal. So, I guess it's just a detail. Very small one. Is spying worth it in this game? Yeah, at least in the beginning, in, in certain circumstances. If you know, like, if you want to uh, drop your neutrality as quickly as possible, then sure, it's more than worth it. Like now, I don't have any other op any other way to reduce my neutrality if I don't increase threat. My neutrality would basically get be permanently stuck at well ten point twenty four. I'm not selling supplies, let's focus everything on production. So this is going down. I'm still going to prioritize that. <clears throat> it also saves, uh, I see, with regard to, to um, upgrades. Should be going down by 0.07, but apparently, for some reason, sometimes it's just or most of the times it's just 0.05. 
It has potential to go down by what I just said, 0 0.07. So I'm not sure what's going on. I'm out of uh, crude oil, so I'm screwed. <laughs> I'm gonna have to cancel one of these uh, fuel deals. They're full of money anyway. Um. Sure, let's buy one rare materials. Excuse me. <clears throat> Again, you uh, tank, so I cancel the, the obsolete brigades and add new ones. Just to make sure we save IC. So sometimes it goes down by 0 0.06, sometimes it goes down by 0 0.05. Under most circumstances, in my experience, it goes down by 0 0.07. I'm not sure exactly why it doesn't go down by that much now. Weird. Shitty practical. Okay. I, I'm gonna have to cancel one of the deals. In the long term, the UK is unlikely to be the one that respects the deal. Japan joined the Axis, Italy joined the Axis. But spying is, isn't worth for tech, in my opinion, no. Not in my opinion. I mean... You're better off using the leadership to resource the techs yourself. You need to be extremely lucky to actually grab something that's worthwhile. It's random, you know, so you might grab... I don't know, battle cruiser production as a landlocked nation, and then you'll be like, seriously, I spent all that leadership, and after so many dead spies, I grabbed battleship production or battle cruiser production. So, no. If you have some spies laying around doing nothing, then sure, until they're dead, use them. Apart from that, not really, not in my opinion. You need to be extremely lucky. If you could focus, if you could choose between the techs, which tech to grab, then sure. But you can't, but you can't, so... Nice timing. We're about to go to war. Again, awesome timing. We're getting the text out of the way, the most important ones. 
so soon we'll have some leadership for for uh, available for for officers I'm not putting anything into supplies on purpose. The dudes that we've got will run out of organization. But who cares? And they'll start dying. That, I think, if memory serves, gives him further attrition. But I don't care. What I care is, is building stuff faster. So we're going to have a period where we're going to upgrade the units, maybe, and grab some officers, and we're going to grab manpower from Japan. Man, so many dead spies. And that's because I didn't do any counter-spying. Anyway, I need a very small break. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Did you restart the game? I did. I did very poorly last time. I could have made the pre-war... a much better pre-war build. But that's what I did. It's November of 37, and look. Oh, that's just bad. Fuckers. And I have like, all, I already have way more troops than I had by middle 38 or 38. Anyway, I'll be right back, just a couple of minutes.
So I'm back, sorry to keep you waiting. <clears throat> yeah, I went to grab a coffee. Um, are you guys listening to me? I can't monitor the OBS. So whenever I go on a break, I need to know if the microphone is muted or not. Are you listening to me? Okay, cool. Let's go. Almost time to go to war. Build up is almost done. Okay, thank you. Welcome back, Fortline Badger. <laughs> There we go, we're almost there. Sure, thanks, buddy. That really helps. You know, we have to um, make them think we're their buddies. I probably should go to three three year draft now. So that I'd start buying manpower from Japan. How many brigades do I have? So we got uh, 24, so it seems, so that's like five divisions, five and a half, not bad. Yeah, let's go to a three year draft. I need to start, I need to declare war. To be able to declare war, I actually need some officers. So I think I actually should have been at three year draft after building, having built the last brigade. But whatever, we're much better than last time. So with these, I can. Buy some units, I think, from Japan. Let's do it. And so this is where the exploit comes. So we're at three year draft. So these are reserve units that will, uh, that will be at 75. 0.75 or at 75% strength. The game only allows me to buy 12. That's because that's all my ma the manpower that I've got. Then I'll just add you know some reserve units to clear to to spend that manpower, put it in the pool. So I've got zero manpower, the manpower can't go below zero. I unpause and I grab the units from Japan, despite having no manpower. So I don't actually spend the manpower. Now I just cancel them. There you go, 71.
slightly exploitive, but what am I supposed to do with, with Tibet? Seriously. I'm go I'm, I want the challenge, but I also want to be able to do something. With 0.6 manpower gain per month, I can't do shit. Thanks, Flatline Badger and Tiro. How <laughs> we can play as a miner? Yeah, but most miners don't need these. I don't. I, for example, to conquer the world as Albania, I didn't use any manpower tree. It's just Albania is like a superpower by comparison with with these dudes, given the location. So I'm finally grabbing some officers. I need to check Japan. Because I need to trade with them again. Did I just buy... Like, whatever. I bought infantry. I should have bought mountain troops. It's way more effective. Per money spent. I'm just like, seriously. It's just mistake after mistake. doing it or am I forgetting this stream is making me want to play Hearts of Iron 3 again I'm glad a Tibet World Conquest incoming, maybe. Yeah, for if you want a challenge, if you want to play World War II game and you want a challenge, within the Paradox line of games, it's just this one. So you play as France at maximum difficulty, and you, you wait until the historical time for war, and you really, really, really need to know how to play if you don't want to get your ass delivered to you by Germany AI. So try that in Arts of Iron 4 and see if that works out. So I'm going to declare war on Cuba to get the best laws. That's the only country. Um, there's also Dominican Republic and IT or IET, whatever the pronunciation is, and Cuba. These are the only countries not guaranteed by the US. So, so I'm declaring on them just with one thing in mind. I want the best laws. So time finally reached 80... Well, I reached 80 unity a while ago. So we're gonna go, gonna go to every industry emphasis. Um, total economic mobilization. Um, service by requirement to grab those officers quickly. 
that's it. It's gonna strangle the the economy with regard to you know production, but it's fine. Let's grab some supplies finally. We're gonna need them soon, very soon ish. No, I'm actually going to focus exclusively on almost all exclusively on officers. That's still gonna take a while. Because we're on a, on a very tight schedule. So let's see, I need to trade with Japan again. So that's the priority now. I mean, I love the music, even the music is, is gorgeous. It's just bloody amazing. I, I miss listening to the, listening to these. Uh, clicking so much to grab some lines is, isn't very good, but whatever, it's... The UI in this game was not very good. Finally, it's starting to have some manpower. Would you look at that? In the UK, we switched from grabbing thread to grabbing spy. To grabbing thread from G's, from increasing thread to grabbing to grabbing. From increasing thread to grabbing tech, geez, that was difficult. The national unity now is basically irrelevant as Tibet because you only have like We only have one VP, so national unity is irrelevant when you have only one VP. Oh, wait, we got two. I misremember it. No. What the fuck? I'm asleep. I only have one VP, so it's as I remember it. You could have like... It, it doesn't matter. If you have just one VP, you lose that VP, you get the next. So that's irrelevant. As long as you can grab the... As long as you can defend your capital and grab the best laws, that's basically irrelevant now. Okay, I remember the trick that I was talking about uh, yesterday, which is to enable specialist training when it's time to reinforce the troops. So they will reinforce that with an extra extra experience which is really exploitive this game did have some exploits like these are the T's
Wow, someone is drifting in your wood. I didn't listen to anything due to the headset. Probably. This microphone picks up everything. It's just impressive. I didn't hear anything. The music is really long. For me, that is. <laughs> yeah, it's loud for me. I know it's it's nice on stream because unless my voice is lower than it should, the sound of the game and the sound of the music is exactly on the spot that I like. So I know it's fine. I just can't monitor my voice. But if it's sounding nicely too with regard to the game, I'm just saying that the, the volume on my headset is really high, so it's difficult to listen to stuff outside. So time to unpause, soon we're gonna go to our so these shenanigans so we won't have to do as many shenanigans. And it's gonna be time for action. I just want that manpower really, really high. It's not very high. Yesterday I remember having like 600, but also now I have way more tubes. I'm barely making money, which is scary. It's scary because I still need to buy landing crafts. <clears throat> I probably should put everything into officers actually. Screw the... Uh, should I? ETA, February, so I'm waiting. So the same thing again by the, the brigades. What? Oh, you greedy. Never mind, it's cheap. Five, five, five dollars a, a piece is good. That's all my money. I hope I can make enough money to... Did I... I hope I did. I, I bought mountain tubes. I hope I can still make money, sufficient money to... to buy the landing crafts. Without landing crafts, I'm screwed. I did buy mountain troops, good. I basically didn't build anything there, so I'm ditching it.
No, I want officers. Screw the infantry thingy. I need officers. Without officers, I'm I'm screwed. Done. Out of energy. So five plus fifty percent that's seven point five. If I grab the I see dude I will have uh, eight I see. I don't have money, damn it. So and I I need money. I would have to sell supplies. You want to buy some supplies, some nice supplies, top-notch supplies. This is really good stuff. I'm screwed, whatever. I can I really need money, damn it. China is getting its ass kicked by Japan. Well, I'm, I'm screwed. I need money from Japan. I, I need money to buy landing crafts from Japan. Not sure exactly how am I supposed to grab that money. But I still have a couple of years, or three or four years, to actually go fight Japan. As long as we keep the relationship up. I should be able to somehow make grab money to 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 buy the things that I need see shit see what <laughs> it's really totally worth it CAG tank carrier air group tank Really what I needed. Anyway, I think it's high time to deploy the units. I hope. They take forever to regain organization, so I think it's time to do it. This time around, I want to put units on inside the headquarter it's just if I do it no I don't have many leaders if I put if I put some units If I put some brigades inside the headquarter, I can actually bring that headquarter to fight and you know use the leader more efficiently. No leaders. Okay, now it's time to change the. Yeah, guess who doesn't have money? Oh, you idiot. <laughs> I should have at least grabbed some money to have some money to be able to change the law. To it's just stupid.
Oh well, another mistake. That was so stupid. I've just wasted like 10% experience for each one of these units. Okay, screw the steel, the steel. Screw the... That. Wow, really strangled for money. Usually it's not a big deal, money is almost irrelevant if you have the resources, it's just that in this playthrough, because of the specific situation with regard to Tibet, manpower and geographical location, money is almost everything. Someone cancelled the deal. Great. Whatever. I'm screwed. So whatever. Like seriously, let's down. Let's scale down everything. What am I gonna do? At least now we're making some money, really, really slowly, but we are. Let's prioritize reinforcement. How much to change the law? Three bucks? No. Point nine. Okay, let's not do reinforcement yet. Let's just upgrades seem fine. Kind of. That's gonna take forever. I'm sorry, but it's really important the... Um, it's really important, so... I need to change those laws to... To, um, to change a lot to specialist training. screwed. I'll check again tomorrow. Could you please buy some, please buy some supplies? Whatever, I'm screwed. So forget about it, I won't, I won't make it. Let's prioritize reinforcements. Soon you're gonna have 140% officer ratio. If I was gonna do this again, I would do much better, obviously. We've got slowly and steadily the now the way that I used to play this game is coming back to me. That's Austria being annexed. 
I'm actually gonna give some units to the Ad Quarter to take advantage of that leader, even though I said I wouldn't, but... That's a logistics wizard. That it's important that the dude levels up. Eventually, he's, he's gonna lead um, an army group. I suppose. Okay, let's change this to specialist training. Still in time to gain some experience. <laughs> Laughable. You see the experience going up. Yeah, totally worth my uh, the click. Radar, combat impact plus 10%, you see, extremely useful. When that hits 140%, I'm declaring war. So, 1st of May. Nineteen thirty eight, we're going to our actual war. All out assault on Shibei and hopefully still in time to go kick these dudes ass. So I'm going with the uh, upgrades. Let's give it until the end of the month on officers, then we're gonna change the laws again. There you go, thanks Saudi Arabia. Ooh, this is actually good, this is actually the good stuff. Because it opens up a bunch of techs that are really important, like radios. We need that one, radio technology, in order to grab radios, which increases the combat efficiency by 10%. So that was really, really nice. So I'm gonna go back to one year draft the reason for that is because i need to build stuff faster even the the reinforcements will be cheaper in the upgrades if memory serves the upgrades are going to be cheaper i'm going to leave these on prioritize upgrades But, you know, this doesn't come out of thin air completely, it has some consequences, the consequence is um, Wow, this unit will shatter 
Because I'm an idiot. Um, the consequences we gain less manpower per month, but manpower is really irrelevant right now, and on and the uh, attrition is 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 bigger, not the actual attrition over here, but manpower during peacetime. There's manpower rotation, so it's bigger. The lower the draft law, which means it's like attrition in peacetime. So the lower the law, the more manpower you lose. But right now it's basically irrelevant. It's just we gain less manpower, but it's already so pathetic that it doesn't really matter, does it? Can I actually win? You can't fight. Um, stop it. I just fucked up. Let's support from here. These dudes cannot fight yet or they'll shatter. Shatter is like once the units reach uh, like a very low strength, basically like this one, they will, if they lose more strength, they would shatter. And we'll be basically at zero, almost at zero. And won't be able to fight and we'll retreat near the, the closest, uh, I suppose, theater headquarters or we'll go straight to the capital. And wait for reinforcements. That obviously has a huge cost in manpowers and especially manpower, so you don't want them to shatter. Let's see the chat again. Does it matter to have your officer ratio above 100? It does. A lot. But they gain more organization, which, which is this green bar. After the green bar depletes, the unit won't be able to fight. So the higher the green bar is, the number, the better, and the officers helps with that. And it also decreases the attack delay, which is the, the amount of time needed to wait to be allowed to attack. You know what, let's, uh, yeah, never mind. Let's wait, be patient for this to arrive to the next province. Everything's going smoothly except production. But we do have a bigger army than we had last time, so there's that. Let's see, quick victory. That's what I want, really quick. Massive casualties for the enemy, no casualties for our side, basically. Now we do the same over here. Shit, I can't support. This is really... 
like I it's the second time that I think I can support from there to here but because I thought this province bothered this one. The difference is minimal, as you can see. Anyway. They're going nicely. This helps so much, but so much. Back to the top. I see for reinforcements decreases, the cost of unit is, units decreases, so uh, we need to prioritize the reinforcements now. Wait for the attack delay to be over before we attack again, obviously. So these dudes are gonna attack over there. I wonder if I'll grab a, a stacking penalty already. Probably I will. No. Tough battle, I should be able to win. We're being we're attacking and we're being attacked, so select the unit with less organization. This unit will shatter, so let's wait for it to reinforce. This one will stick around and the other ones will reinforce. Come on, you can do it. Very bloody. Treaty of Mini, World War II, really uh, about to start, we're like way here before the historical day. Just waiting for the attack delay to be over. It's over. Let's attack over there. This is a huge country, like very big. Um, it takes forever to get from here to over there where we need to be to annex them. And I probably need this one too. In that sense it takes forever, like it's big with regard... 
it takes forever. Like in this place, it takes forever to move. So it's like gigantic. We just captured some resources. Looks like this was was this was their capital. I didn't realize it. So we captured their resources. Which is awesome. We captured some money too, that's what it looks like. So that's definitely gonna help. So I tried to launch Heart of Iron 3, but it does not allow me to access it. It just minimizes to the tray. Just click it, like, on the tray, tray tr on the Windows uh, tray, like, just click it, just slightly, like, like if it was a, a, a cup full of, of, of tea or something, just slightly touch it and it will maximize. Don't try to use the, the task manager or anything, just slightly click it, be patient. It refuses to maximize with me too, but so just kill it, restart again, and then just over it, over, over it with the mouse and click it just slightly. So I don't know then, sorry to hear that, I also had a shit ton of trouble to get this to work. Try going to the forum and grab the podcast e exit. There's an, an a 64, not 64 bits, but, um, or is it the 64 bits? I don't recall. It's an exit that's supposed to make this run better to avoid certain problems, so try that on the farm. Search for podcast exe file on Hearts of Iron 3 in the known issues thread or there's a thread on the forum that on the Hearts of Iron 3 forum there's a, a thread there with known issues and how to deal with them. One of them talks, gives you a link to this exe file. Or you can just Google it. You need to be registered on the, on the Paradox Farm. So you have the game re re registered there too. Or else they, you won't be able to grab it. They're on the run, so... Okay, so it might be a, an issue with... Um, okay, that's different, so let me see if I can help you. Did you change the resolution of the game? Of the monitor? Try to remember the last resolution and put it and, and use it. So you have an older monitor. Try to remember what was the refresh rate and the and the resolution of the older model, older monitor, and set it back to that. Or else go edit on your document documents folder where there where is where you have the Hearts of Iron game. There's a settings thing, file, text file, and you need to change the resolution of on that file. It says the resolution, you know, so just search it and, and change it. Um, that and add, edit that and save it to the current resolution.
didn't help. So last th last thing is to clear the map cache. Just clear it. Uh, temporary files or or is it on the same documents folder? There's a cache for the map. Just delete everything inside that. I think on the documents folder. There's a, I think there's a cache. Just be careful, I don't, my memory is a bit hazy with this game. I think there's a, a, a map cache or something, just clear it all. Maybe it will help. I, I need water, I'll be right back. Um, yeah, Rimworld is looking really strange. You know, I was looking for a mod to to get rid of the social fights, and I guess I overdid it a bit <laughs> and changed the game completely. That was unexpected. Uh, so seriously, this is Hearts of Iron Three. Um, War, 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 damn it, World War Two game. It's like a simulation attempt, uh, kind of flawed, but a, a nice simulation, nonetheless, of War, World War Two, made by Paradox Development Studio. It's a game with a very big learning curve, but really, really, really and uh, rewarding after you learn how to play it. The replayability is just insane too. Not as big as, but... <clears throat> like, probably not as big as uh, Europa Universalis 4 used to have, but... But it's still really, really big. Like, really gigantic, actually. I, I spent thousands of hours on this game. I 
I don't know, it was years ago. My last game was like years ago. I played it very briefly. If memory serves in 2007. I was afraid of these. That's what you get for being greedy. I'm gonna go along with it. That's uh, militia. It's just my troops can't lose much organization. If it lose too much organization, I'll be stuck. Hello, dog. How do you do? Thank you for the compliment. Finally starting to build some more units. Oh shoot. So this is the kind of thing that shouldn't ever ever happen. That was really bad. I need to pay attention. Like, these guys lost, like, almost their organization. That was so bad. Usually when, you know, you play in Europe, the infrastructure usually there is quite good. So it's not as dramatic when you lose all the organization or half of it. Over here, however, it takes forever to regain it back. That's why this was so bad. Because the infrastructure, the infrastructure sucks. So we need to be patient and uh, attack with a massive force, overwhelming odds. I guess I could try and encircle them. Uh, it's maybe pin this down. Look, looking good. These guys have a stacking penalty. I said it's looking good, but um, I'm not sure. No, it's looking good to encircle these dudes. 
But we need to win this battle. Looks like we'll be able to win it at great cost. But uh, we'll destroy three divisions if we win this battle. So it's probably worth it. He's gonna try to reinforce, hopefully... He's gonna try to get to the next province. It's probably strategic redeploying or something. I'm hoping this, this headquarter finally arrives and... And uh, will allow me to pin down these, these dudes. I could already try to pin them down. They just retreated. So forget it. They're shattering they're sh doing a shatter retreat now. Like not shatter retreat like we have in new for so never mind. They're just retreating to the next province like as if they had lost the battle. because it's uh, it's a very old game hello tacos I'm probably just gonna go with that. This needs to come out of the assembly line faster. Or whatever you wanna call it. There's still a chance that we get we we'll get there first. Um, it's probably not likely, but I guess we'll see. Wow, the amount of time is just incredible. I've been at war with these guys for a better, a better part of a year, and they're still almost like doing border clashes excuse me there you go that's what i wanted to see So they're now attacking me into the mountains across the river. Let's just say they don't stand a chance. That's a massive minus 90 penalty to the efficiency. And this headquarters still hasn't moved. Reached the next province. That's also remarkable.
Time to kill those jokers. So that's three divisions down the drain. We also have a massive penalty to the efficiency, but we're surrounding them. Also, they have a minus 10% due to being enveloped. And they're gonna lose that battle for sure. And once they lose it, they will be destroyed. Because I'm gonna get to that province before they can get there. I must, because you know, guys, like, these guys have been moving towards that for ages now, like ages. So I, I will probably get there sooner, won't I? Like ages. I must, seriously. If not, it's gonna be annoying, extremely annoying. And a mistake to have attacked so soon. Infrastructure is completely fucked up, so it takes forever to move in these places. There you go. Destroy it. Three divisions, that's great. I guess move over there. If the infrastructure was any good, we could strategically redeploy. But if I strategically redeploy, the unit is probably going to move slower. So ETA, January 12th. Strategic redeploy is like going through rails, like using a train or something. Uh, well, looks like we still move, still move faster. Even if only slightly faster. See the chat again. Where do those divisions go? The manpower, manpower will just evaporate. Yeah, they they are just removed. Um, I think Victoria Two uh, came slightly after Hearts of Iron Three, like 2010, if memory serves. This one was from 2009. Hello, ILV, how do you do? I mean, like, you can imagine they're on a... You can roleplay, they're on some prisoner camp or something. But that's not the thing in these games, so... For all purposes, they're gone. Practical purposes. 
It's not like you're gonna suddenly recruit them to fight on your side. Most of them would refuse to fight against their own land. I suppose. Yeah, but these ones can't run away, they're encircled. They were encircled, so they couldn't run away. I mean, this is not airtight, I suppose, but... They would have to go underground, some of them... I'm, I'm not sure, I, I never fought on, on a war, in a war, I just can't imagine. Or try to... I, I suppose it's very hard to imagine. So imagine yourself in an occupied country, your country is occupied. And you decide not to surrender, you decide to keep fighting or to try to blend in. On a, in a land that's probably not yours, like it's not your land, you don't know anything about that place because you're, you no, know, no, you live over there and you were fighting here. So, what are you supposed to do? No, I'm, some, some of them can't even get away, like. I guess they have the hope that they won't get killed, they would be treated fairly, I'm not sure. So they surrendered. Right. They're probably hungry. <laughs> And it's it's, it's it's a difficult thing, war. No, I know from the com documentaries, and that's about it. Never been in a war. Fortunately, hopefully, I'll never be in one. Because <clears throat> I find I find I like to play war games, but war itself is really stupid. Like it's really f beyond stupid. Destroy the infrastructure. When the infrastructure is like this, they better you better walk them. If you try to strategically redeploy them, you're screwed. They 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 will take forever to move. So that's why I'm moving them like these. They can stay literally there for months on on end without actually leaving the same spot. Come back of the legendary runs of Marco. Hello, Luca. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks for the compliment and the chuckle. Like, hey, mass assault. That's gonna help regaining organization faster. Look at that nice fuel. I'm I'm in I'm like being really stupid now. Without all that fuel I should have tried to sell it. Until I grab a port I can't sell. Japan has a deficit. 
<coughs> with regard to money. <coughs> Whatever, I'll try later. Let's probe those guys. Bad idea. ETA, January 29th. See, it takes longer because this is damaged, or this is damaged, but now it's too late. I'm already suffering with supply. So the supply system, the supplies come tr from the capital mostly, or border provinces with IC. They all, they produce they produce supply lo locally, and if there's need for the supply further, no, away from the province, it will move one day at a time towards where it's needed. Since Tibet doesn't have a single factory, everything gets produced and and it goes to the capital. Then from there it goes where it's needed. Do we have any ministers now? It's January of 39. I see plus 10%. Right now it's useless. Or is it? No, it's not. It would make my AC go to 8. I think. It would be plus 60%, but there's descent. At least when you get rid of the descent, it will go to 8. And we now actually have the resources to support it. At least for a bit. Every year, we uh, there's a chance we might grab better ministers. Spionage bonus. It's better than the other one. Organization regain rate. That's really good, too. I was hoping for a leadership minister, but I don't see it. Yeah, I just, I'm nearing their new capital. But I'm struggling, struggling with lack of supplies. I could try to put uh, my highest skill general on, on an army group. But that would only save like 10 supplies now, 10%. My highest skill do this level 2. That's what it looks like to me. Yep, 
so that at army group level it saves 10% supplies I guess so they're directly attached to a logistics wizard which should save 12.5% supplies if memory serves so these dudes currently is attached is in at the charge of the theater headquarters so he's reducing the supply consumption of these brigades and the headquarters itself by 25% and all units attached to it directly attached receive half of that bonus which is minus 12.5 If I create an army group, then attach all units to the army group, that bonus of six point of twelve point five is gonna get reduced to six point twenty five. But we'll we'll have an, a small gain, a really really small gain, but we will have like five or six percent gain, five percent or something. Not even that, so like 6.5 plus 6.5 plus 10 percent, so that's 16, 6, 6.25 plus 10 percent, that's 16.25, it's a gain of like almost 4 percent. I guess it's probably worth it. Let's create an army group. We have so only a few divisions. Most of them we can attach them to the app court to the army group. Unless I'm missing something. I should be able to. I guess look these guys are really really good aren't they just look at their skills already maximize at level 2 they're still gonna gain experience and they're gonna be better but it's just gonna be extremely extremely slow Let's actually grab uh, a different name. A division called Infantry Brigade. Really sucks. So we've got two divisions that are not attached under an, an army group. I guess we create we could create one. Obviously, this comes at the cost of combat efficiency. At the expense of combat efficiency. But it's definitely gonna reduce the supply consumption. I'm not taking into account the supplies needed for the headquarters, but they're so pathetically low. The headquarters. We could even tell it to not reinforce. It's dangerous if you're fighting someone with an air, someone with an air force. But these dudes don't have an air force. Okay, I think it's side time to actually. It looks cool, but 
it's a bloody waste of time to add infantry to an headquarter. So I don't think I'll do that again. So the supply consumption was reduced by around 4%, which should help with the situation. Can I get over there? It's because they have no supplies. And it really helps fuck up the supply if we strategically deploy. Because the units require way more supplies to move if strategically deployed. I'm always pressing the 3 and the 4 button as if I was playing RimWorld. The, these dudes are gonna join the coming turn. This, is, this did not go fast enough. Wow. If they, they have no supplies, they lose all their organization. That's what happened to these dudes. And they take uh, extra attrition. Now they start losing organization. Eventually the organization is going to go to zero. supply oh shit stop it stop it Let's open up another... Let's put that unit there just to open up, to free some more combat with. Change the minister to combat reinforcement so that these dudes can eventually reinforce. No need. It's really gamey to be replacing the ministers, but... It is what it is. Oh, I need that division to reinforce fast, to gain morale faster, organization faster. So I need a new minister. It's really bad for roleplay, but for gameplay it's really... I decided to allow these guys to reinforce. is really useful. I can't wait. Come on, you can break them. I know you can. I'm doing this to try to conserve their organization, 
to keep to keep it as high as possible. Because like I said it takes months to regain. And an infrastructure like this. troops basically how am I supposed to go after after China time's running out there goes the checks the next there goes Albania and World War II is just around the corner. Just waiting for more troops. should I should attack over there too so let's shield They're getting entrenchment. But my units are all fucked up. The supply is killing me. I cannot wait. This has a capacity of seven point six supplies per day we have a demand of 30 supplies per day so okay that's it i can't attack over there let's keep moving Just to avoid being encircled. If I don't do that, I may get encircled. So I need to keep a line of troops. Like going from here to there, I get the risk of being flanked. No, like cut off. But hopefully I'll just do that really quick. 
since I'm also moving over there. supplies again. That's why we can't stop. We need to keep moving because every time we move... Um, did I just capture... No. We, we may grab some local supplies. Like they had some units over here. It's likely that we might... I mean, in Europe, it's likely. Over here, not really, because days upon days upon days pass until we finally get to the, to the, to the next province. Sometimes months. What I'm trying to say is that in, in, like in Europe, we can go from one province to the other in just hours. If that there were any... with enemy units there, there needs to be supply too. So we can capture some supply and that allows us to keep going. Allows us to keep going. At least partially. That's a VP, let's try to capture it. Uh, in a moment. We're about to get to that province, we're fully... We'll have a massive firepower that we can focus on that province. So whatever the amount of troops they've got there, we should be able to dislodge them. And we did dislodge them. Good, that's your capital, you're gonna capture some more supplies and probably just an him. Finally. Yeah, that I love that I love that flatline badger. It's like half the challenge comes from the supply system, which which is a really interesting... Uh, I mean, it tries to simulate the hardship of supplying troops in, in, in a war, like... And it does that... I, I'm not saying it's perfect, never claim it's perfect, but at least it gives us a bit of the... feeling of how hard it was to supply the troops, and this all makes sense, because... You know, I, I actually know how the support supply system works. It's uh, predictable and there's many, many, many ways to deal with the problems. So I've just used one that I could. Right now it's the only way that I can try to ease the supply issues or reduce them, which it's through the order of battle. Let's see. But there are many ways, from improving the infrastructure to to air supply, to making convoys by sea to a certain parts or many parts near the front lines, say, which is something you can't do in Hearts of Iron 4. At least you, I couldn't when I was playing it. Say, I am... I don't know, Hungary, and I just go ham on the world. So I conquer Romania, Poland, Latvia, all those countries. Or, I don't know, so Poland, Hungary, Romania, Poland. 
then I decided to fight the Soviet Union. So, to fight the Soviet Union, now my stockpile is over here. So it has to go from Budapest through Pol Poland, deep inside the Soviet Union, like, it's a long line of supply. So it's really difficult to supply the troops inside the Soviet Union. But what I want to say is, when we finally capture some parts on the Baltic Sea, it will have instantly have uh, a very good uh, impact on the supply system because on the supp overall supply situation, because at least near this area, the supplies can be brought by sea. So we have some car transport ships, cargo ships, you know, like transport vessels that bring um, supplies to these ports and that's going to help with the situ supply situation so that's one of the si one of the things you can do another one is to use air supply along of course with supplying the at least the south through these ports in the black sea But the situation over here would be, would be really dire without capturing the, um, how's it called, Leningrad. No, I know that because I already played a campaign like that and it was really, really, really a blast. Because uh, it really, in, at least in my mind, simulated the hardship of supplying the troops in the front line so you really need to make some logistic planning or else you're gonna get stuck your troops are gonna die because they don't have supplies that's pretty much what happened with some campaigns in history they over they overextended themselves no supplies no clothes for the winter, dead. Lost thousands upon thousands upon dozens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of men died or were captured because of a blunder like that. In last time that I played Hearts of Iron 4, you know, it was all easy, no hardship from supplies unless. We were trying to do encirclements, which was really silly. Every time I tried to do an encirclement, I ran out of supply, but that was the only time. Because I could supply how many troops I wanted inside the Soviet Union, as long as I didn't do any encirclements, I would not have any issues with supply. So I only noticed supply issue, the supply system due to nonsense. Because encirclements are really are usually something that just lasts a few days to complete, and all of a sudden everyone's stuck due to lack of supply because of a nonsense rule. But whatever, um, I'm not here to talk about Hearts of Iron Four. I'm just making a comparison really quick. Yeah, the, the half of the soul of this game was, or the soul of this game was the, su the supply system, which is um, not perfect, but a really good, a really good way to get immersed in the difficulties that were that existed whenever trying to supply a big army inside enemy territory. And I loved it. Back in the day, I like I love it now. We're still talking about supply. There's not much thing, many things I can do right now in this situation besides the order of battle, because I'm a very poor nation, backwards, poor, no air force, no technology, so. I can always improve the supply organization tech, and that's what I'm doing. But this one, two miracles, it's just gonna help. Just like a bunch of other things help. We just um, capture their new capital. 
Jeez, we need to capture the other one. Well, I'm working on it. They have a very high national unity. Zero point three, what the hell? Oh. It uh, instantly becomes like 3% at least. Yeah, the deck is also another thing that Hearts of Iron 3 does better, in my opinion. Hearts of Iron 4 really looks nicer, nice. Now the graphics and deck tree and so on, but content, it's really bad in my opinion. It leaves a lot to be desired and contributes a lot for the lack of replayability of that game by comparison with this one. Because you can... You know, you can do many things thanks to the deck tree and the way units are built, divisions, boats, so it's really a really highly replayable, replayable game thanks to the tech tree and the amount of units that we've got that is uh, bigger than what we have in Hearts of Iron 4. Hearts of Iron 4 there's like, you know, you can't even split up brigades, so Hearts of Iron 4 at a glance, or apparently, it seems it has bigger, more units, more of everything. But it's just, it's it's just an appearance. It appears to have. It doesn't actually have more. It's just like, it's like I say, say this is. Um, Hearts of Iron Four is like so. This is a brigade, right? Brigade is made of battalions, if and companies, but. If memory serves so let's say it's made of battalions like three or four or five I don't know how many to be honest it depends on the military of the country but for the sake of argument let's say each brigade is five battalions so Hearts of Iron 4 does it like you have, it's like, I, I open these and this expands and says that, well, this infantry brigade has a, a light artillery attachment, as an anti-tank attachment, as whatever. Now, like, it just displays over here, you know, but physically it's just a brigade. So that's Hearts of Iron 4. It seems it has more, but it doesn't. Because if you go see here, these... This brigade also has light artillery, also has... You know, I'm researching the light artillery for it. it as anti-tank weapons, as infantry support weapons, and as small arms. It's all built into this brigade. So, and, and then, like... It, so in that sense, Hearts of Iron 4 seems like it has more units, but it doesn't, because... You, you can't even detach them, and then you don't have militia, you know, you don't have... There's a bunch of units that you don't have. It's just... I don't, I don't know how to explain it, you need to understand the game the way that I do to understand it. Like, I can't come here and split these to a brigade. Hearts of Iron 4, you can't organize things. You can only do it through templates. You can't pick up your most experienced, say, marine brigade or division 
and mix it up with some light armor or medium armor to do some special op, whatever amphibious op you want to do, you know, like or whatever. You can't just go select the best of your troops and combine them the way that you want. Split them up, combine them, you know, shift shuffle between divisions the, and, and make some special op unit, something. With Hearts of Iron 4 you can't do that. Like I said, you don't have militia, I can't... But again, this is turning into a comparison between this game and the other one, but... I didn't want to do that, I'm gonna start ranting and it's gonna be boring, so let's just stop it. And then there's that too, you're talking about Cav. The, there's no armored cars, so if I want to make a division of armored cars, I can make a division of armored cars. There's no such thing in, in, in Hearts of Iron 4, there's Recon, that on its own... can't do much and um, it's not actually armored car, it's just a, a, a brigade atta a battalion attachment if memory serves or support for recon that could be like I don't know cavalry, it could be like uh, bicycles it could be motorcycles it could be, you know, probably it's also armored cars But what that does that does nothing for replayability. I'm I'm actually gonna have to send them over there. I really need to take that VP. So most most people just look at the at the skin like the. What what's um, like you you look at the division composition where over here it's it's it seems limited like oh you just have these ones right but these ones and the rules for making divisions that are not restrictive you can combine them in the way that you want there's no restrictions no invisible walls while well, there's a bunch of them with Hearts of Iron Four. It adds a lot to replayability, and you can do a bunch of things and play in many different ways that you're not allowed to do in Hearts of Iron 4. Again, for once, because there are no, so some units are non-existent, and then you can't split them up. That game for me was a big letdown. It sure is colorful. Even that, it was a disappointment. You look at this map, you feel immersed in World War II. Like, this looks like World War II map. Like, you look at the pictures of the, you know, like black and white. You actually see some un some military units, you know, like from the time in black and white. It gives you. It's it's better to be for immersion, I suppose. You click on the text. You have a description with pictures from the time, or at least they fool me. They're sufficiently good to fool me. Instead, you have some nice animations in Hearts of Iron 4 and, and a bunch of uh, cartoons or cartoonish pictures. So, there's that too. You have historical leaders. You know, there's a bunch of bullshit in this game too, like, for generals, like, I, I probably if I'm gonna do a research, some of these guys are, lived before or after World War II, probably, I'm not saying this one specifically, 
I just know that in with regard to my country, I, I did a small research and some of those generals were not from the time period of World War II. Some were from like the ninth late 1800s someone somewhere from the 50s so but it fools me <laughs> if you it fools me and it gets me immersed that's what no i'm not sure I'm, what i'm saying is that this is not 100 percent accurate and the 60s too Hello, Tardis Mechanic, good morning. How far is the superior multiplayer game? I don't know, I never played in uh, multiplayer. What does not matter as long as they fight? Uh, with regard to the generals, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's just I'm talking about a simulation attempt versus an, an arcade, complete arcade. So if you're trying to simulate something and you actually use the wrong persons, that the least you could do is to actually use real people. If you're gonna like or try to. If you're using real people names, try to grab the ones from the timetable from the, from that lived on that period, that were actually generals on that period, instead of the 60s, that's the least you could do, or else your game is gonna look bad. Like, if, if you're using a name from the, the 60s, that was a general on the 60s, uh, then I'm gonna... I can't help but to wonder how's the rest of the game with regard to accuracy. You see my point? That's just it. Not a big deal. I know that's what I thought when I saw it. I was like, Ser seriously? That guy was from the war with the colonial war. No, and not from World War II. Or that guy was not a general during World War II, he had already retired. Okay, so... You know, I'm doing all these, but Japan might just declare war on me and then I get my ass kicked and it's GG. But... Until that happens, if that happens, I'll have some fun. These guys are a puppet from Japan. These dudes up north are a tough nut to crack. So our IC just went from 5, 6 or 7 to 11. So the base IC was at 5. Now with all the laws and administrative genius, it's now at 11. It jumped from 5 to 7. You know, the actual IC, so it captured a couple of factories or more. Because if it's not the core province, we don't actually get 100% of the factories. Don't remember is the exact thing. It's probably like 50% or something. But I'm not sure. I don't remember properly. So he grabbed six, five. With that one, six. So, do you want from five off the map to seven? 
so it's like 33% or something. And they could actually grab some resources. At least with the resources, it's minus 50 because it's non core. So I suppose this is minus 52, but then there's an add up over there because we grabbed six factories and we went from five base to just seven, which is a gain of just two. So it's 33%. Unless this changes, which might still change, that's what we grab from factories in non core territory. So core is these are these ones in where the revolt risk is zero. These ones are non core. And yeah we do we have a bunch of rebels in this game too. How's the infrastructure? It's going to take months to get to the border with Xinjiang. So let's just see what we can do. That's level one infrastructure. I don't need to worry with that. So we need to send at least one unit over there. don't need to worry with that one so we can only attack two provinces and be attacked from two provinces so we need units over there and over here I want to attempt to strategic redeploy um, if they go through damage infrastructure we're screwed going to be a massive waste of time. No, uh, I had just five bays. I'm talking about the bays, not the total. What matters is the bays. For the calculations that I was making, what matters is the base I see, which was at 5 off the map. Then that's modified by the laws and, and the minister and the tags. Since I have no tag to increase the base I see, you know, to make it. to improve. No, I, just like those modifiers. Administrative genius, total economic mobilization. If I had technology, it would add to that. But I don't. What sometimes happens is that the factories are damaged. When they come back online, it would, uh, will add to the base thingy. Even if it was f uh, 50%, it would add three factories, just added seven, two, so I suppose it's around 33%. We could check it in the game files, but don't feel like doing that. It's gonna be a huge boon if you actually manage to conquer Sinkyang. I need to have some troops on their border. That would be wise. Because if they conquer some of these provinces, you might get um, out of supply and just die. But they might join the Comitern at any moment. That would suck balls.
what is good what is so good about Xinjiang? It's just it gives me more factories, it gives me more leadership and it gives me more manpower and resources. I suppose. That's what's good about him. Come on, don't join the commentary. Don't join the commentary. Do not join the fucking commentary. Not yet. As soon as I have a, a single division near their border, I will attack them. Come on. Come on. Sure. Come on. There we go. World War Two just started. Okay, can't wait more. Come on, just get there. Just okay, they're mobilizing, so fuck them. They might just join the commentary and don't really care. Now I'm at war with them. Usually they cannot call upon the Soviets to help them. This is now core territory. Uh, this is now own territory, not just occupied. All hell is breaking loose across the world. So we have less issues with supply now, at least inside our territory. Um, let's attack. Sup support from here just to, to give a bit more of. Or not, let's just wait. Can I attack over there? No, I can't. Okay, now we can attack. Uh, Poland is occupied and they took dancing <coughs> directly annexing it. It would be a huge boon if this dude didn't join the comic turn.
I suppose it's going to be really important for the war with China. Oh boy. They're all important. I guess I need to change this to service by requirement again. Blocking officers. Okay, no more strategic redeployment. Once these dudes arrive, they're gonna move, just, just gonna walk. Have you played Arsenal of Democracy? No. That was, uh, um, uh, like, um, uh, a mod or a big mod or being for Hearts of Iron 2 or something. No, I never played played it. Thanks for the subscription. Well, uh, 12. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the support. It really helps me keep streaming. Thanks a bunch. Yeah, don't retreat. I guess we need to support that those dudes. Or else they're gonna end up retreating. don't really want to push right now what I want to is to prevent these dudes from retreating that's what I wanted um, looks like I might not be able to unless they hold for another 30 hours Come on, hold. As usually I want to attack with, with more strength. Come on, hold. They're about to retreat, damn it. We won. That seems to be just headquarters. Nope, got fooled. Scammed. Yes, support from here. Yay. Just change my mind again.
long time watcher now and I have some room to support you. Thanks again, man. Thank you. This is on join the commenter and man, it's gonna be a huge boon. We need to We need to take their capital before they join the commenter, so I can't wait actually. There goes Denmark next. So I, I actually can't wait. I'm gonna just select my best divisions and and go straight towards their capital. So let's do that while we still can. It's just that this is, if memory serves, used to be really strong with a lot of divisions. go that's their the garrison of their capital gone come on get there get there man it would be so great because no partisans that would mean no that would mean no underground resistance and just regular partisans underground resistance is the most annoying thing ever like the most annoying sort uh, type of rebel in, in Paradox games that I've ever seen. It's underground resistance. They're not really threatening from a military perspective, but from an annoyance perspective. Oh boy. I mean, they're also threatening, military speaking, because they fuck up the supply lines. So if you manage to get there, before they join the commuter, they will be a next. But just to troll me, these dudes are gonna join the commuter before I annex him. Just watch it. They're bringing some resistance back in Hearts of Iron 4. What? Underground resistance? But there are no rebels in that game. That's one of the few things they did well, which should teach the rebels, because they're just annoying. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. So our IC just went to fourteen. From seven to uh, uh, from seven to nine, so we capture another six factories. Or five, and the leadership is at six. Or was. Let's switch this back to one to um, one year draft. Because I still need oh, I just switched that to one year draft. That was stupid now. Kind of, because I still not really stupid because I still need uh, I still need to build more units and that's gonna help me to speed up the unit production. It's just that I could have taken this time to go grab some more manpower from, from the Japanese. Japanese. 
So next target is going to be Communist China. These routes are really, really a tough nut to crack. Thanks to this river, the fortification in their capital and mountains. So these guys are really a tough nut to crack. Really difficult. Because you need to attack across a river. I can't not, I cannot, I cannot not try to conquer these because, you know, it's leadership that I need, it's manpower, it's, I see everything, so I need to try. Anyway, I need a small break, I'll be back in around three minutes. How can you not have a simulation um, without partisans or even like Warsaw Uprising? I mean, it's just because that's just the way that I did it. They did it in this game, Hearts of Iron 3. It's just bloody annoying. Luckily, and, and, and it's just. It, we cannot forget that this is also a game. Like. So, the games are supposed to be fun. I'm not saying them for them to be easy, it's just that they shouldn't be annoying. And the only thing that the rebels do is to annoy. It's just, and then like, for example, one thing is to have one uprising, like once in a while you have like one uprising. Another thing is to every single fucking day, someone uprises in, in no, it happens all the fucking time. That's the, the main problem, is that... Is that... There's no cooldown. As long as there's revolt risk, there's a chance they're, they're gonna rebel. You see? So, I can have an uprising there, kill all of them. The next day, have another one. Kill all of them. The next day, have another one. And so on. So this is really poorly implemented. Because of that, I wouldn't mind have some rebellions uh, as long as it were something reasonable. But no, it's always all the time. Like I kill them, and then the next day they pop again, and then a couple of days later they pop again. You know, like how many Warsaw uprisings there were in history? One every other day. That's Hearts of Iron Three. After you become sufficiently big. You're gonna have rebe rebellion, rebellions every single fucking day. So that's really stupid and, and immersion breaking. So and, and tedious. So that that's why Hearts of Iron 4 did it better. They ditched all that bull crap. Anyway, I'll, I'll be back in a moment.
All right, let's continue. These sort of rebellions that I was talking about were in new for but around 1.8, patch 1.8, if memory serves, they were removed, thankfully. Uh, d uh, with the Heart of War expansion, again, if memory serves me, because this was a long time ago. If I'm not misremembering. It was with patch 1.8 that the way that rebels work in new 4 today just, uh, became a re no was introduced back in 1.8 uh, because rebels seemed used to work the way that they work in hearts of iron 3 which made them beyond annoying because hearts of iron 3 at least as um, a really good automated way to deal with the problem well it's, uh, that's not available for Europe Universalis and on top of it the rebels in Europa Universalis are severely OP while over here there's just militia easy to beat Just like they were in real life, they were militia, so... So you're not seeing rebels beating, beating, destroying entire heavy armor divisions, like in EU4, if needed be. You just need to roll poorly enough. And the rebels will kick your ass. And even if you don't rule poorly enough, they're so OP in the numbers and talking about the devil. Hello there. Yep, it's gonna be fun. It's just that the the rebels in this game are pathetically weak, so usually they don't, they don't even put up a fight. They're just there to annoy. As soon as this brigade has one organization, I should be able to destroy those fuckers. See, they don't even want to fight. I suppose this is a bug with, with this game. I'm not sure. I just know this works this way. it works this way. So just designed to annoy. I, we can trade with the Soviet Union. I had a, I had a, a flu. I'm still recovering from that. <clears throat> or a cold. That's why the reason for all the coughing. second I need to trade with the Soviet I need energy are we willing to buy supplies No, because they have no money. <coughs> <coughs> Damn it. It's 
just likely, it's also likely that they'll show me the middle finger. Okay, they accepted it. Okay, that's it for the the rebels. That's going to continue to happen, <clears throat> which, like I said, makes this game really annoying with regard to rebels. It's just uh, that type of rebel is not military threatening. It just annoys you to. It just annoys you. So we can set up an headquarter with just a few brigades and the headquarter will take care of the of the rebels automatically. That's why the rebels are bearable in this game, or else they would be in no unbearable all this time and they still haven't managed to go to full organization so I'm declaring war this is gonna be really difficult to win their divisions are mostly if not all uh, regulars, which means they're at full strength and full. They're at full strength. Which means they fight really effectively. It should mean that this is gonna take forever for me, for us to break through. Unless somehow we're lucky. So that's four, eight, four, eight, twelve, sixteen brigades. So it's going to be a war of attrition. I'm preparing for that. They have a shit. They have a shit ton of divisions. And then, there. What's worse, it's because from here we can't support from two provinces. From there, we're screwed. <laughs> so it's a direct assault across a river into urban or two mountains. That's just you know like mm, awesome. It's gonna be great. So, unless we're severely lucky, like incredibly lucky somehow, we'll make it in a timely fashion. But most likely, this is, we're gonna be, this is gonna take forever. <clears throat> Let's see what happens. Okay, that's not good. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I'm gonna stick with service by requirement now.
Okay, we won. Gonna have a nice sucking penalty. It's just I need my my units there, all of them. So in order to choose the one in best shape to order the attack on Yana on Yanan or the other province, whatever. Whichever is the weakest one. I need to break through that river. It's good that they're sending their units piecemeal, that's for sure. Just 0.3% chance of reinforcement for reinforcing, which makes it highly unlikely that those units are gonna reinforce. But they did. Stop it. Stop it. And stop it. And stop it, I suppose. We no longer have a stacking penalty. Who's in what? This is a, these are the Japanese. If that's what you're asking, this is their puppet. The Mankuku. Historically, that was, uh, I think. Or, no, it was this one, led by the former emperor of, of China, the last emperor, as a puppet state, if I recall correctly. Like I said, this is going to be a war of attrition, as you can see, it's already started. We won again. Okay, this is cool. Looks like we have a shot at actually crossing the river. I just see... Um, I only see a... A division of militia. I'm keeping the pressure instantly, obviously. <clears throat> I need to cross that river. They have infantry in their capital. If I capture that, if I, I grab a beachhead over there, I then can try to conquer that one and that one. Circle the capital, attack for multiple directions, and and hopefully that will do the trick. I might even conquer it sooner if they exhaust their their uh, organization attacking like that. Let's probe them. Ooh, nice. Okay. So they're screwed. I guess I was lucky. Send army group. We need a general for the combat events. We won the battle for Yana. That was unexpected, seriously unexpected. This went really well. We were lucky. We 
We were very lucky. It's really tough to defeat the 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 communist Chinese in this in this game as Tibet, you know, because I I did it before and it was really freaking tough. There you go. That's China. Communist China conquered. I see just went to 11. It's probably gonna increase thanks to the, these factories being offline. Now we have a massive border with nationalist China, nationalist China, the next opponent. I'm really scared that the Japanese are going to declare war on me. So, how many divisions do we have? <clears throat> nowhere near, nowhere near enough. They, they're probably allied you, you, with Yunnan. Yeah. If I declare war on you, what would happen? But they won't accept the peace deal. I can't get to their provinces. If I declare on nationalist China, they're guaranteed by Yunnan. So that means I'm gonna fight these dudes too. Just way too many people. So I've got, let me see, one, 12 whole divisions. I said I was gonna stay at service by requirement, but I can't. There's no way, Rosé. I think this is bugged, but... That's it, no ministers. No generals, no new generals with the year of 1940. Sometimes, you know, in January we grab, we have access to new ministers and new generals. <clears throat> Let's just spread them out across the border. That's about it.
We have a very big border with these dudes. We still have service by requirement. Um, let's uh, buy some stuff from the Japan, from Japan. Need diplomatic points for that. I need to shield for a bit while we recruit some more units. <clears throat> That's why I need to go to service to, to um one year draft. It's a lot of clicking, but It's worth it. <clears throat> what does a garrison do? It's uh, it's like infantry it just moves slower and has lower piercing and lower. I think um, uh, toughness or something like that. Uh, I'll, I'll just check it. It's just a high soft attack. I, it's actually has quite a bit of soft attack, but extremely slow and uh, low piercing, very low piercing. And it's not good for offensive. So um, it's in, in Hearts of Iron 4, is, is it toughness? I think it's toughness so in Hearts of Iron 3, but. Like I said, I don't play this game for a long time, so... I may be misremembering. I think it's toughness. So it doesn't make it very suitable for offensive. They're just good to hold the part, hold, um, you know, hold the part, defend the coast, defend. <clears throat> so defensiveness and toughness. As you can see, even though they're behind the times with regard to tech, toughness is at zero. If you compare it with infantry, it's six. While the soft attack it's really interesting for the for the garrison if this was up to date because this uses militia tags the soft attack would actually be really good given their that they're like just garrison like militia cheap so Three I see cost. This one costs just two point sixteen. And then there's another thing, which is if you reselect the I don't wanna say something stupid, let me just double check it. I don't think I'm saying anything stupid. Militia and PTS partisans. No, it's just this affects only militia. But the what's the combat rate of this? Is not isn't it already 0.5? 
No, it's one. Anyway, this, this, these units are really good for soft attack for their cost, but they're really bad at everything else, because especially because they're incredibly slow. And their toughness is really, really low. So, basically I only use them to hold parts, to give me some time to react to the thread. And even then, it's probably just better to spam some militia cheaper and with the right decks, uh, more effective, I suppose. And then they can be upgraded to infantry. So where was I? So I just bought some licenses. I need to ditch the manpower. Sorry. Um, a bit unfocused. That was all my money, almost all of it. But now we have 700 manpower. And the officers, they don't need as many officers. Good one. They just need a third of the officers if memory serves. While the militia is like a tenth of the officers, so let's see, where are the officers? No, that's manpower. Officers. Yes, exactly. They require a third of the officers. Like, like less than a third, just 30%. Militia requires 10% by comparison with infantry that requires 100%. But then their piercing sucks. That's why I usually couple it with an anti tank. For the arm combat arms bonus and an extra piercing and a bit of soft attack too and lots and lots of hard attack. Let's go back to one year draft to save. To save on. I see. Looks like I'm a bit tired. I didn't sleep very well today. I had uh, lots of nightmares. So, yeah. Let's see if this works well. Works well. I went to basic training, so I don't want them reinforcing. If they reinforce, they will reinforce with shitty recruits, because um, or at least I wanted to go there. 
Nej, det är... It's just to say I see. We need to go to war with, with uh, nationalist China. The sooner we do it, the better, because we're on, on a very tight schedule. Japan is gonna declare war, it's just a question of time. And I need to be ready for that. No reinforcement, damn it. Oh, it's whatever. This needs to be under manual control. They're I guess I could just do prioritize production, forget about the upgrades. So I need the force to... There you go. Soviet Union just took the Baltic states. Italy just joined the war. Against the Allies, I think. Yep. I need to have units along all my border and I have to have a few spare ones to go encircle the nationalist Chinese capital. Names like infantry brigade when it's actually a division, so that's why I did these. <clears throat> I guess I could abandon this area. I would say one division, but then I would be heavily encircled. They would be able to attack me over here from four different places, so it would be really difficult to hold, so forget about that. <clears throat> I guess I could try to find places where it's easy to defend and I don't need as many troops to hold to the territory. Like a really good objective or short term would be to conquer this province. So I would, would not have to have troops to hold one, two, three, four, five provinces and would instead just focus on two, these two. Or these two, or better yet. Just this one, and this one, and this one, or wait. No, I would just basically have to hold this one. If I conquer this province, this dude will be out of supply. 
hold to it. I would need a fraction of the troops. Did, didn't you do a world conquest of Poland? I did. Jeez, I lack officers again. At least I conquered Europe. I don't know if it was a complete world conquest. But I at least conquered the entirety of Europe. Now, including the Soviets. Let's try to attack them by early 1941, or else this is gonna fail. There's no way I can resist the Japanese if I don't conquer these dudes before, well before the end of 1942. I don't think I can do that if I don't go to war right now, but out of fudge, can I go to war right now? can there we go uh, we got Vichy on the map a puppet of Germany or kind of independence guaranteed by Germany I'm prioritizing these decks because I'm gonna have a really big problem with uh, supply and <clears throat> the higher the operation level organization the more I can do with the few troops that I've got. I built all those divisions and I only have two practical, two infantry practical. Impressive. That was a mistake. No, I'm attaching the divisions directly to the army group because I want supply reduction and I don't have officers to actually make a nice core army setup, so it's just units directly to the army groups. Or theater at quarter.
Okay, looks like we might be on to something here. We're about to have the units, so at least have a single uh, a division at each province. Now with... Uh, another four or five, six. Yeah, it's gonna be like 1940, early 1941, and it will be ready. Oh shit, they're reinforcing, idiots. That's just silly. Is he stuck always on the same music? Norway. Hello, green gauges. How do you do? Gary just on the, joined the axis. I don't see that every day. If memory serves. Or I don't remember actually. Did they usually join the axis? Let me just check it. Check it. I don't recall. <clears throat> I know Romania usually joins the Axis, Hungary usually joins the Axis, these dudes usually do not join it. Unless they're feeling, feeling threatened, but I'm not sure, don't remember. I know that if I attack them, they instantly join, but... Maybe I'm just misremembering it. <coughs> And they already have rebels. See, are they have more musics? <laughs> the game has more musics. But it seemed like it was stuck on the same music or same couple of musics. I didn't produce fast enough. Uh, this can be done faster. Like upgrading militia to infantry saves a shit ton of IC. Making the militia, then upgrading it to infantry saves lots of IC. If memory serves again, so this build is just bad. I'm, I'm nowhere near ready and I had hopes to be ready by now December, by December we're gonna have a shit ton of new units so it's going to be early 1941. 
The question is, will we be able to take over them in just a year? To take them, take them out in just a year? Sorry, I don't like to see again the name Brigade for an, for an infantry division. So when I spot it, I change it. So the opening moves are gonna be against what? I guess I want to attack over there to to be able to attack like these. Can support from there, so the main forces of attack will have to be the main force will have to be over here, and some some also over there. <coughs> Excuse me. If I had the patience, I would search for the units with the highest amount of experience and bring them to this offensive. I, I think I have to do that. It's just silly not to do it. Because this needs to be like Blitzkrieg. Or else we die. There you go. So, uh, kind of experience. Let's move it. No time for for that. When will the next batch be ready? Before the end of the year. Awesome. Maybe this one will end the end will end up being produced bef way long before January 15, 15th. Officer ratio sucks, but um, I'll, I'll take care of it. Operational level organization is gonna be ready soonish, which is really, really, really good. Looking for more experienced units. Obviously, this has a, a counter, like a, 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 I would say it in English. A downside, which is this division is to hold this province and it can be attacked by from three different places. So, being more experienced, we have 
would have helped or would help it achieve that objective. January 6th. So I've got five divisions to work with and one, two, three, four, five, six provinces to hold. I, I could grab more units from these ones if I manage to conquer this province quickly. Or is it this one? It's this one. It's so bloody risky though. But I have to risk it. I don't have another choice. I will lose, probably lose the war if I don't risk it. I would say I'm gonna lose if I don't risk it. So are, how are we gonna proceed? This is one of the primary objectives. I need to conquer this and defend it so that we don't have to garrison all these gigantic borders. But it's a gamble. <laughs> if it if it backfires, it can backfire spectacularly. I'm still gonna try to hold the capital as a just in case measure. It has the potential to backfire spectacularly, but I'm gonna try it. I don't see another choice to get this started really soon. So that's the last brigade. to service my requirement. Specialist training. Prioritize reinforcement. Switch from tech gradually to to officers. I say gradually because I need those two techs first. Infantry support, uh, operational level organization, supply organization, and infantry support weapons. Probably this one first. I don't know, one month for two and we attack. Actually, I don't have time for that. Let's just... Just do that. I suppose that one is more important. Jeez.
they're both important. This one is really good for defense, and this one allows me to do more with less. So on the 27th of February, it's gonna reduce the attack delay by 24 hours. If memory serves. Okay, what do we have here? Shit. They can easily take these. So that's not good. It's just to try to keep them in check. My garrison over here will instantly try to take that one. Way too many units here. They're militia, but I got all these very big border and just six divisions and one brigade to all the seven divisions and one brigade. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven provinces to defend. Seven, eight provinces to defend, and I have to conquer one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Anyway, the main objective is this one. I should be able to take it quickly. I hope. There we go. Um, everything's gonna go to officers. On the on the at the end of this month, I will attack. No matter the officer ratio. They should all be at maximum. Kind of. So here we go. On the 1st of April, 
Tibet is going to declare war on Nationalist China. That's going to happen after a very short break. I'll be right back. A couple of minutes. At the most three. Right, let's go kick some ass or get our asses kicked. Whatever happens first. So these dudes are guaranteeing nationalist China. If I declare on nationalist China now I'm buying I'm buying a war with Yunnan and Nationalist China. So I think I'm declaring war on these dudes first. So, I'm in a dependent war against these dudes. Why is that important? Because if I surround the capital from Nationalist China, they will be still be supplied by these dudes if they are on the same war. Because they don't have a formal alliance. I'm already at war with them, so I can't be at war with them again. Can I? Can I piss them out? I'm not sure. Like. They will accept it, okay, so that's good. 
Now we declare on these dudes. And we piss them out, because these guys will be a thorn on my side. Therefore we bypass the... the guarantee of independence. So... I got a truce with Yunnan. Can I break truces? I don't remember. I can't. This truce lasts like, I don't know, six months or something. Or, excuse me, three months. It's a really short truce. If memory serves, it, it lasts like three... Somewhere between two and a half months and four months. I don't remember exactly how many days. It's just a very short truce. So I just bypassed it, so it's just me against China. It's just Tibet against China. So without wasting any time, let's try to capture these provinces. <coughs> This seems like a really poor idea, but I'm gonna probe them. I, I really don't have the forces, do I? Can I support over there? Can I attack? I can. So I attack over there, support from here, that seems like a better idea for now. Slow this down just a bit or substantially just for now. So that's that. Um, these guys are entrenched. I need them to. I need to keep them that way because they can be attacked from all four different directions. So I can't count on them. Uh, kind of. This was stupid. These guys probably. Some of them should have been that over there. Unless I can break through these quickly. I, this was really stupid. So that's one, highly experienced, that's two, that's three. Why was it stupid? Because if I want support from here, I'm gonna have a, a attack across the river into a mountain. That's really, really fucking retarded. But I want a victory there quickly, so... Needs must, I suppose. That's what, plains. But it's protected by a river. It can hold this ground into just two provinces instead of, instead of three. Like, if we conquer these, we can put these two on this province or just leave one division there. It's well protected, even though this is, these are planes, which sucks, for defensive purposes, it has a river. Everyone attacking it will have to cross a river, so that's really good. So, uh, let's unpause. The die is cast. Um, no one can attack this province, so... I guess let's support this one. Let's just go there and see what happens. What the hell? No supplies. What the hell? That's just surprising. I need to keep that going.
I will break through, I think. Or will I? <laughs> I don't know. Let's uh, find out. Can I win against that? Terrain minus 20. I have to try. Same thing over there. Also protected by a river and so I have to try. Jeez, I should be able to, to break through. This is just militia. But I'm not using a leader. Why don't we borrow these leaders? This is really dangerous because I cannot afford to deorganize a single division. So. That's why this is incredibly dangerous. Because after winning the battle, they need to hold the ground. I don't have backup, I don't have reserves. I'm not producing anything. Anyway, the Blitzkrieg is going well over there. And we won both battles over there. Let's bring this dude to where it's likely to be needed the most. Where would that be? I suppose most definitely over there. Jeez, this guy is tough. We're attacking across a river into a mountain, so there's that too. That's usually not really very healthy. We're attacking and being attacked. This dude is almost done. It's really very important that we encircle him. Without it, we can't can't we can't win. Like nationalist China is just too strong. It would be a massive war of attrition. Don't want to take the capital. That's not what this is all about. not what this is about. Hey, new brigade, good. The, this is about surrounding them to start them. If you surround the capital, um, 
Just give me a moment. I need to save the game just in case this crashes. I need to alt tab. Just a moment. Please don't crash on me. Just don't. I may have just crashed Hearts of Iron. So I can't all talk from this game. It's it's back, okay. Okay, there we go. The, we have a shorter front now. At least you used to have to defend four provinces, now you only have to defend three, which really helps given our lack of divisions. This is still going. So I'm gonna capture this one, then I need this dude's help to capture that one. That's just two brigades. And somehow we already have issues with supply. It's probably because I'm I'm also strategically redeploying a division. I need I can't do that. I can't keep doing that. They consume like double the supplies. Okay, cool. These dudes are gonna stay there to hold the territory. Just see militia, which is so good, so good that I only see militia over here. The key province is, is is about to be occupied. This province is absolutely key to the success of this operation, of this war. As are these ones, but that's gonna release a shit ton of troops. To help me defend these ones. Because these ones will be encircled. So over here I can be attacked through by from four sides. I'm encircling trying to encircle these circling. I'm trying to encircle this province, but these dudes themselves will be enveloped and encircled. Or in risk of encirclement. Oh great, they stopped moving. That's just fucking great. Let's 
let's keep pushing. I'm moving three divisions to that province. Probably that's an overkill. <clears throat> so the pincers are moving from you now both sides to try to speed this up. I'm running out of steam now. <laughs> as the as I capture provinces, I start. You know, I need to defend them, and guess it doesn't have divisions for that. That's what that dude is supposed to do. Okay, I'm gonna lose the 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 entrenchment bonus there. Hopefully, I won't regret it. That was unexpected. I'm, I'm, I've not been possible. I haven't been able to conquer this province due to bloody supply issues. You have to stay there. Stay there, but support. That's really bad. Can you please get that province? Looks like the, the, the division is not supplied. This is lucky, we're attacking across a river and no opposition into a mountain. These guys are still gonna take a bit to get there. That one's irrelevant. This one is now basically irrelevant because they cannot get there. They have no supply. To get there, they have to go through this one. So back in the day, to not waste time, I used like a bit of an exploit. To compensate for the lack of units, it just, it just created a temporary headquarter and take the province, instead of using a, an entire division to do it. I can't go there, so... I mean, it's a military unit, it can't attack, doesn't have a frontage, but it can take a province. The AI sometimes does that too, it's pretty rare, but sometimes they do it. So, I do it too. Look at that massive army coming this way. That's why the speed here was absolutely mandatory. So that we can then move these troops to all these. The encirclement is almost completed. I'm actually gonna allow that to continue. It serves my interests. 
These dudes have a poor defensive. They have a poor efficiency. These ones don't. They're extremely weak. My dudes, but... Um, reinforcements, reinforcements are coming. And then when these dudes lose enough organization, I will counterattack from there and maybe take the province. I will have to monitor that division. Okay, the encirclement is done actually. Their capital is encircled, which means supplies won't flow. They might have some supply in these on these parts, but eventually it's gonna run out. They're all cut from supply now. Unless they have some puppets, which they don't. They're all cut off from supply. They, they, because that's their capital. Unless I'm missing something, that's their capital city. So... They're all cut off from supply. That's the objective of these. That's how I did it like some five or six years ago. But I used a slightly different strategy back then. That's why I'm playing with Tibet today. Because I... I um, first... It's been a while since I played Hearts of Iron and I was really eager to play it. But I couldn't get it working on my system. I finally managed to do it yesterday and I was like... So, I'm gonna play Hearts of Iron, but uh, who should I play? And I, bam, it has to be something that's challenging for me. And and then I instantly remember Tibet, how I was not happy with the results of the last campaign. I think I abandoned it, like some five years ago. These dudes might actually win, which is um, interesting. So the bigger threat comes from what? It's over here, undoubtedly. So that's where we should send the visions. No doubt about that. They have a massive amount of firepower. These dudes should be out of supplies. If I had an airplane, I could see it. That's another thing that I love in this game, and uh, and I can't, I don't have in Hearts of Iron Four, which is to use airplanes as as to gather intelligence on the enemy. We could actually, with an airplane, give the order to to scout this area, like air superiority or something like that, or tactical bombing or something, and air superiority would be enough. You would see exactly what kind of troops are there, their supplies, everything. We could check out everything. And I, I find that awesome. Anyway, I need to destroy that unit. One less unit to worry about. I'm not gonna take the city, but I wanna destroy it. If I, one of these troops gets attacked, this one will support. Can't have that. Okay, time to attack. And then this one is in circle, it's gonna get automatically destroyed. And again, I can't take it due to lack of supplies. Are you kidding me? That's a bit frustrating, that's for sure. Yay! 
Can't go there, lack of supplies. I can't do shit. Because, like I said, I don't have the tech, I don't have an air force, I don't have a port. So. I have to hold and you know, we do my best. These dudes should be out of supply. I will probe them in a month or so. It's just the only one. I guess I could probe them now, just... But I doubt they're out of supply right now. So, yeah, that was kind of silly. This should be relatively safe because they need to attack across a river into jungle. Same thing over there. This one is kind of vulnerable, but this is a mountain and these guys are entrenched. So, unless they're using mountain troops, that division should be able to hold against a, a superior force. A much superior force. Oh, that's just bad. So that has, that province has a requirement of 73 supplies and only received 45. What's this, the infrastructure? What does the infrastructure look like? Really bad. Nice infrastructure there, let's just, or you know, as nice as we can have it over here. That one was better. Idiot. So let's move the division over there to regain organization. Thanks, Daniel. They've got an air force, so that's a problem. Efficiency, their efficiency is pathetic. It's also pathetic that I was not able to take that province yet. Uh, but these guys are going to be cut off soon. Look at the casualty difference 38 against over 700. That's how good this defensive position is. Okay, so over here I can be attacked just from one side. Let's send this guy over there, it should be fine-ish. Especially because I expect to send these dudes there as reinforcement. 
Why don't we do it already? If I put it over there, they would instantly attack me. And I don't want that. They would sense the weakness and they would attack. At least that's what I remember. But uh, might be misremembering. I don't think so, but it's possible. So I'm actually going to press forward. I really need to clean this area. Because we need, let's see, do you have lack of supplies? There you go. If I was at war with Yunnan too, they would have, they would be supplied by Yunnan. So they're dead. I need to press forward quickly. The, the faster I win this war, the faster I'll be ready to face Japan. Because Japan is going to declare war on me by around late 1942 or early 1943. That's guaranteed, as far as I can remember. So they're retreating. Let's put some dudes over there. We're holding all the provinces that border the capital of the nationalist Chinese. Now we just have to hold to wait a couple of months or so and they will all be out of supply. Maybe for it depends if they have some supply, they had some supply on their network or not. There we go. The war against the Soviets, between Germany and the Soviets, has just begun. What the? Oh, you're under attack. This guy doesn't have organization and he was trying to snipe a province. Oh, he does. I thought he didn't add organization. Sometimes they do that. They don't have organization and despite that, they try to snipe a province. Lack of supplies, minus 48. When when Hearts of Iron 4 was released, these tactics this tactic was still possible. It's really cheesy, I know, it's really cheesy, but I mean we're talking about T bad. <laughs> T bad needs to do some cheesy tactics, really cheesy, if it wants to actually do something besides being a name on the map. Something more than that. They can't attack from neutral territory. So with that in mind, they shouldn't be able to attack over here. So this province is safe from these dudes. This one is going to be taken. Finally, this problem, this dude has supply. Kind of. Oh shit. Oh shit, this is so bad. This tech is also needed. I 
Every time the supplies go from one province to another, the amount of supplies is reduced because we, we pay a supply tax, supply transfer cost. It's like to account for the costs of moving things from province to province. No, they don't just magically appear from one province to the other. They, it requires some actual resources to make them move. So that's what I think that tax is all about. So if you have a very long line of supply through enemy territory, your supply that say it comes from Hungary and you want to supply something over there by the time it gets there it's severely reduced because of all that tax all such supply loss along the, the way all that inefficiency and um, this tech helps us be more efficient with uh, transportation so supply transportation that's the name of the tech Me too, flatline badger. Hey, we can attack again. <laughs> uh, let's see if the dude is actually going to be able to take it now. Or if it does. All oh, right. Okay, whatever. There's a glitch over there. Let's just move it to the next province. There's some glitch with the supply system over there, obviously caused by the lack of supplies, no lack of lack of supply throughput, through sufficient supply throughput. Can I do something to minimize it? Let's see the the officers now, the generals. Field Marshal, Field Marshal, okay, there's a Major General that could be a Field Marshal, that's gonna improve the supply situation even if only so, slight, so slightly. I've got a level 2 Field Marshal, so... Even though the other Field Marshal was about to get promoted to level 3, but this instantly uh, saved me like 5% supply in all the 5 divisions, which is not a lot, but it helps. Hello, Aldeon. It's going good, thank you. It's going well. I'm having a blast. Man, it was so long since I played this game. Having a blast, thank you. So now I have a spare general, where should I put him? I don't know, let's keep him... Sp um, as he is... In reserve. They can't attack through, from neutral territory, that's not allowed. So, see, they were moving over there, I think. They're, I mean, if they actually manage to do it, it's just bullshit. So they shouldn't be allowed. See, headquarters trying to conquer my, my provinces. So the AI also does it. It's not just me. Many of the things that I do, I learned with the AI. Yeah, sh truly, some things that the AI did in this game, the AI actually did it well. And I learned with it by ob observing. And I, uh, to, you know, I kept what was good and ditched what was bad. So using headquarters to capture provinces sometimes it's a good tactic. 
And like I said, I might have learned that with the AI. Well, I definitely learned some things with the AI, like the AI likes to boomstack navies. That's really efficient with the right admiral. At least for some of those navies, it's really, really efficient. Because with the level 8 admiral, it reduces the, pos the stacking, the positioning panel. Um, how does it work? I don't want to say something stupid. It's just that there's a positioning penalty or uh, for too many ships stacked. So when the all size is above a certain amount that I don't remember, a, a stacking penalty comes into play. And then they're gonna actually shoot them one of themselves, you know, the ships shooting one another due to friendly fire, too many ships on the same place. It leads to friendly fire. If you have a, a, an admiral, a level 8 admiral, it reduces that to near zero, if not zero. So it's viable to use uh, doom stacks of navies, like destroyers, light ships, no, any surface vessels with a level 8 admiral basically eradicates the friendly fire and improves positioning to a, a degree that's uh, helpful. And, um, becomes highly effective to use zoom stacks of ships. And I learned that with the AI. Because I was getting hit <laughs> constantly. Like, seriously, you cheating bastards. 100 battleships or whatever. And I, so I'm gonna do the same. Instead of using all kinds of navies, I used the most effective ones under those circumstances, which were the light cruisers and destroyers. Seriously, all my transports destroyed. I'm just probing. They have lack of supplies indeed. There goes Greece. Yeah, the UK, uh, Italy, early earlier in the game, con uh, puppeted Ethiopia. So it, Ethiopia was independent. It's like retained a, f a bit of its independence instead of being annexed by Italy. It was puppeted. Excuse me. Now it was just conquered by the UK. This is gonna make fr uh, Germany be extremely strong. Because they've annexed instead of just occupying. So they've annexed Greece, they've annexed Norway. Which means more resources. More IC, more manpower, more leadership, more everything. Well, not leadership, but more manpower, IC, and resources. Less rebels. They and they annexed Denmark, so they lucked. Uh, they lucked a bit with um, annexation, direct annexation of Norway, and Denmark, and Greece. Usually they do like these dudes did. They form a government in exile, and this is really fertile land for partisans from underground resistance. If, for instance, and sometimes it's possible, they had actually annexed France and the next Netherlands and Belgium, the Soviets would be in deep shit because Germany would be a powerhouse, a really strong one. It's already a very, very big, it's already a very strong country, but with less rebels to worry about and more icy
probably more manpower too. Probably no more manpower. I think memory serves actually, so don't take that to the bank. I know that I want to annex stuff. The, uh, it's better overall. And that's what they add with. Um, that's what they got by annexing Greece, Norway, and Denmark. It's just better annexing. It's not the only downside, if I remember correctly, is the lack of leader, less leadership. Let's see, occupation policies. You can check it over here. So you see. Leadership modifier minus 70%. If it's okay, if it's an X territory, it's the, instead of minus 70, it goes to minus 85 if memory serves, or even minus 95, but I think it's minus 85. But again, my memory is easy. It's just that I might be wrong with the numbers, but it's 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 like that, similar to that. If memory serves, it's minus 85 when an X, since it's occupied, it's minus 70. But on the other hand, we grab like around 40% of the IC when annexed. And when occupied with this policy, it's minus 95. So all in all, I, I want to annex. That's why I usually use war goals. Speaking of which, let's add a war goal. Speaking of, okay, this seems like the party in the north is over. So I'm gonna move these units to this area and start pushing them back. I know I want to do that. But first I need to actually complete the encirclement, actually, you know, occupy the provinces. So these dudes are not allowed to attack from here to there, so this area is safe. With that in mind... I want more troops on that area, so I'm gonna try to do the insert... gonna start attacking from here, I suppose. No, 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 no. If I started, if I put more dudes over there, let's try it. I could try an encirclement. But I don't think I'm gonna need it. Soon they'll all be out of supplies. Let's check. They still have organization though. Lots of it. Okay, let's go to speed 4, nothing's going on. Right. 
I don't want to occupy their province by mistake, their capital. The officer ratio is really high. So I'm gonna continue with the research. This is going well. Really, really well. They're defeated. Unless I really fuck up with the execution, they're defeated. Now it's just a long, long, long wait for the units to move. And... Uh, this is a really shitty place to attack from. I just changed my mind. Attack across a river into a mountain, that's what this is, or urban forest. At least over there we don't have a river. And this uh, division can support. Good place to start an offensive. If you ask me. If I'm in an understanding, you're not occupying the capital, so the supply location doesn't change, allowing you to keep the Chinese out of supply. Exactly. Hello, Shantis. Yeah, it's been a while since I played this game. Like, a lot of time. The, um, I was already feeling an itch to play it, but I couldn't because I, since I upgraded to Windows 10, I couldn't make Hearts of Iron 3 work, so it was a real bummer. I tried, but I couldn't. Then I talked with Dread with Dread and Dread Dread Licious, and um, or I saw him play. He was playing Hearts of Iron 3, and I was like, jeez. Man, I, I like this game a lot. And he was playing on Windows 10, so I was like... And I had no issues capturing with OBS. I never, ever was able to capture Hearts of Iron 3 with OBS. So... Somehow I made it work. And... Um, here I am. I didn't play this for so many years now, at least since, I think I played it in early 2017, just for like, I don't know, five or six hours, and before that I didn't play it for another, at least around, I don't know, one year, two years, I don't know. How did you get it to work with Windows 10? I've been unable. I don't know. I guess I lucked out. I didn't do anything special. I've installed it again, uninstalled it, reinstalled it. Since then, Windows had some updates since the last time that I tried, and OBS also had a bunch of updates. I don't know if that changed anything. I just know that it worked. Then it didn't want to work actually out of the box, but it started. Instantly, it, it, when it didn't work, it instantly crashed. But this time it started. It didn't actually... I didn't see anything. Like, the game started, didn't instantly crash. And then I saw that, I, was, I thought I was on... Instantly thought that I was on to something. 
Then I made some adjustments on the file of the settings for to start, and I go, went to grab the podcast exe um, for Hearts of Iron 3, and here it is working wonderfully. <laughs> now I'll never close the game. <laughs> I, I honestly, I never managed to capture, even in Windows 7, I never managed to make OBS recognize Hearts of Iron 3. I had to use another application that I've got um, that I don't don't use these days. I used it a lot when I was doing YouTube to capture Hearts of Iron and feed it to OBS so that I could stream. Because OBS didn't recognize it. Let's probe them again. They still have way too many, too much organization. I guess I could have another army group. This is really weird the way that I'm doing these, but I don't have officers. I don't have generals, not officers. And I don't have officers too, it's not at 140% yet. And I have very few divisions, so with all of that in mind, it pays off to attach these directly to the army groups and... and theater headquarters. What good is an, an army... an order of battle if you don't have officers, generals I mean. So it's just nonsense. That's why I usually don't play at very hard difficulty with minor, with small countries because it's already they're already weak when when we start, and then they had an added difficulty of not having generals. So this country has a whopping seven generals. So. On top of the minus fifty from very hard difficulty, fifty percent if. Uh, and the, and you know handicap with regard to efficiency of fighting then there is another you know up to 50% handicap too due to having no generals all in all you might be missing on a 100% combat efficiency so it's just becomes really bad They've abandoned the border, which means they don't have organization. Oh, uh, wait. So it's now it's just a question of going after their VPs. I can, can even beeline towards them. Because at one point, the, um, without organization, they can't attack. So at one point, they won't have any organization. So they won't be able to take provinces. So I just need to make sure my own divisions are in supply. So I just make like a beeline towards that, making sure that we defend the supply line for from some odd division with still some organization left.
Yeah, let's just keep going. Yeah, I remember these healing orders. I think that's these a lot back in the day. Back in the day, I did this a lot. And this UI is a breeze. The army management UI, even though it's not perfect, far from it, it's a breeze compared compared with Hearts of Iron 4. Hearts of Iron 4 is like, ugh. If you want to micro it, it's just terrible. And despite all the shortcomings of this UI, like not having a repair all repair repair all damage button, for example, for navies or aircraft, for army management, it's not that bad. I wish I had. I still wish I had like the V, the equivalent to the Viki in in Europa Universalis 4, but that's about it. It's pretty darn good as it is. I'm talking about the army management UI and nothing else. I see you're fine. Hello, Beransky. I see you're finally done with prison architect. What are you? I never played prison architect. You're talking about Dream World. You had trouble with that. The game don't get enough RAM and crash. No, never had any problems. The game seldom. This game seldom crashes. Unless you're playing like black eyes. It at the most is gonna crash wait, wait before I Oh let's just do it monthly please or weekly thank you. This sometimes crashes but it's really really rare. At the most I have like one crash per session. So like seven out, seven, eight, seven. My sessions are usually very long. And usually, I yeah, like one at the ver at the most two, and I instantly spot it when it when it's about to crash. So I just save the game and exit and come back in again, and no crash whatsoever. If I but I do need auto saves enabled. It's just not to not have auto saves enabled. In my opinion. Okay, they're done. No, I could just tell the, the I could just make it an headquarter and the headquarter would conquer all these. My issue is that the headquarter doesn't know that I don't want it to conquer this province. So I need to because I'm lazy, I wanna I wanna allow the headquarter to do it. The headquarter is a bit stupid too. Probably it's gonna take way more time in game to do it than if I was doing it myself. But now we're just beating a dead horse, so it should be alright.
Rimworld is prison arch architect. I didn't know that. Are you not confusing it? I fought prison architect and uh, it was a different game. I don't remember seeing uh, you know, anything special in Rimworld with regard to prisons. The eye can deploy troops in the capital, it can, that's why I will keep it surrounded. As soon as I capture these provinces... I will create an headquarter, or I'll just... Be lined towards their VPs. I don't have many units. I'm lazy, the AI is gonna do a great job. The AI in this game is much better than the in Hearts of Iron 4, if you, if you know what you're doing. If you know how to set it up properly, it's just way, 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 way better. So, and no, I'm not making that up. It's just that much better. Just like in Orbo Universalis 4, the AI was better back in 1.13 than it is now in patch 1.29 so go figure go figure so once this is captured, this is captured, and this is captured, I will create a, an headquarter to take out the remain... No, the, the rest of China. Even though I would do it manually more effectively. You know what? You guys go, geez, so many units. There. 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 And you guys probably move over there. I said I was gonna create an headquarter, but this is still a mess. Like, the units are so far away, and the AI is gonna strategically deploy them. And then we're all gonna die due to lack of supplies, and this is, this is gonna... ...stall. If I had all the units over here, I would create that headquarter, but I don't. Just to make sure I don't get flanked. Let's be lined towards the VPs and see what happens. I need these units, or if, um, 
I thought I needed them to set up an headquarter. If I set up that headquarter right now, because I think I need those units to speed this up, the AI is just gonna strategically redeploy them and it's gonna fuck up everything due to lack of supply. As you can see, the supply is already difficult. So I have to bite the bullet and do it myself. Which is fine, it's fun too. Um, it's just that I could avoid pausing and play at maximum speed and have these conquered before the end of the year. With minimal effort in real life. Less clicking. Don't like clicking. It's going pretty darn well. I think I'm doing it faster than last time, but don't quote me on that, I don't remember. I, I think I am, but I'm not sure. No, I did one thing much better than last time. Last time I, I like a schmuck. I went to war with both China and Yunnan. This time around, since now I'm older, smarter, <laughs> I didn't do that and I declared war on, on Yunnan first and then declared war on China, therefore having two separate wars. So the Chinese instantly went out of supply, basically, after the capital was surrounded. If uh, Yunnan was in this war, they would receive supply through Yunnan's capital until I finally took it. So that's why I think this is going faster. It must be. The auto capture mode in Hearts of Iron 3 is strange for me. What do you mean? By comparison with what? Hearts of Iron 4 also auto captures it. By comparison with U4. Yeah, because this game has way more provinces than U4. If you had to. If you had to siege these like in. If you had to siege these like in Europa Universalis, these would be called Imperator Rome and it would be a click fest. So it would be a massive click fest. As it is, it's already click intensive when doing it manually. Does Japan have two million army in Hearts of Iron 3? No. Um, I don't know, they probably have like 100... Uh, I don't remember. They probably have like 500, 600 brigades, something like that. So that's like at the most 100 divisions, but I don't, I don't remember. I know that, but I think that's too much. The, Ger the Soviets have like 900 brigades, so... That's uh, 450 
Jeez, idiot. That's 250 divisions, give or take. So, or 225, or even just 200, or less than 200, depends if it's 5. Because, but they have like, they have a bunch of divisions of just three brigades, so we're talking about less than 200 divisions for the Soviet Union. So I suppose Japan probably has like some 50 or 60, 70, 80 at the most, also because they like to do tri triangle divisions. What is auto capture? Auto capture is when you step on, when you go to a province, like you travel to a province and you instantly color it with your color, like and stripes. It's yours. You're controlling it. While in Europa Universalis, you need to stay there for 30 30 days, around 30 days, depending on your siege ability and war exhaustion. It's funny how this game, Hearts of Iron 3, is substantially less click intensive than, for example, Imperator Rome. It's impressive. And they've, and they've criticized this game so heavily that, oh, this is too click intensive, this is too micromanagement intensive, yada, yada, yada. And they managed to make an, 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 inc an incredibly click intensive game called Imperator Rome. Clicking is not a big deal when you're small, but when you become a medium size, large size, man, that game is just crazy with regard to amounts of clicking. And now I have an option to create an headquarter here. I could do it and and I could do it and they, they it would work wonderfully. If all divisions were there, I would do it. It's just that this dude's, the AI is gonna instantly strategically deploy them and it's gonna fuck up the supply situation and that's why I don't do it. But if this was, the situation was not that bad, if my capital was not where it is, going through level 2 infrastructure, I would have made an, a theater at quarter to control these units like ages ago. And, and, and I would not be clicking. I will just be overseeing the work of the AI, that's usually quite good if you give it enough resources. The automation in Imperator Rome, for, it's just pathetic, it works really, 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 really poorly. Especially because it lacks this system of being able to tell the AI to work just on this region. Say, I want you to work just on this region. So I paint the area and it's gonna conquer from there, you know, in all sides where there's an enemy. If I was, this guy was my enemy and I paint in this province, AI would attack in this direction and this direction, you know, and so on. While in Imperator Rome, there's no such thing. So if I own provinces from here all the way over there, but I wanted to attack over there, it could instead send the troops over there. So like, it's complete garbage. Not to mention that it's terrible at managing it, managing the troops. So I remember Imperator Rome and the reason why I'm talking about it, it's not because I have a grudge against Paradox, it's just because the viewer man talked about auto capture of provinces. And um, uh, there's no such thing in Imperator Rome. You have to siege it just like in EU4. But that game has the scale of Hearts of Iron, the amount, the, sa the same amount of provinces as Hearts of Iron 4, that has like around the same amount of provinces that Hearts of Iron 3 has, or or less, a bit less. So it would be just complete nuts, like completely nuts. This game would be so click intensive that I would not want to play it. Probably. At least not manually. 
I would have to always use the AI to capture things. Because this one is actually good at doing that. Not as good as a human, but it's good. So I was like, seriously? Just Europe has more provinces, Europe and Asia, a bit of Asia, India, has more provinces, like three and a half times more provinces than you far in the whole fucking world. And there's no automation, there's no nothing that's actually... I mean, there is automation, but you're gonna get post-traumatic stress disorder from tra watching the AI try to play. Like, it's really, really bad to the point that I don't want to use it. This is it should be about to surrender. It doesn't let me cheer. I'm going for a walk, leaving. Okay, I don't know what can I do to to help. But thank you anyway for the intention. <clears throat> and I wish you a nice walk. I'll see you later. Thank you, Brainski. Have a nice day. I never played War in the Pacific, so I can't compare. It's from A A G O D or something. What's the name of the company? It's like it's just a few letters, I think, or is it? I think it is War. Jeez, I just opt out. It's Matrix games, never mind. I'm confusing you. I confuse it with another uh, I see what I, I see what this game is about. I've seen um, a few videos from it. I was confusing it with um, please don't crash. Please don't crash. Will you capture the... eventually I will. Yeah, but this game is more like a war game than a grand strategy game. But it's a war game with a shit ton of strategy. I will capture their, their city, their, uh, their capital when the time comes. And it's this August. This is a very short. It's going very, very well. Way better than I thought it was possible. The two things are did differently. It really, really helped. That's what it looks like to me. These guys are almost done. Another month or so. It's just a question of getting to the VP. To the needed VPs. I can't risk it, so... I'm being lazy. I don't want to do the calculations to, to see how many VPs I need to, to take them out. I'm pretty darn sure that if we take the capital in that one, we'll be able to take them out. That I'm sure. It 
it's just worth one. They are worth very few points. I, I remember that I needed to take one province in the cost. So that's why I'm saying what I'm saying. Back in the day, I did the calculations. It's about the total number of VPs, now amount of points. Each, each VP is, is worth uh, a certain amount of points. This one is worth one, one. That's worth one, worth two, but some of them are worth like 10 and more. Or am I misremembering it? Yes, I'm not misremembering it. For example, Leningrad is worth 20. So Moscow is worth 30. So all those points combined, then we com we uh, evaluate the their national unity. We see what if, what's their national unity, and then it's just a question of doing the math. So let's say, for the sake of argument, the country has 100 points in VPs. It has uh, 70 national unities, so we take, need to take 70 VPs to make him surrender. 70 points worth of VPs. I suppose we can annex him right now, but if I'm wrong, then I'm gonna still have a fight, and this is gonna be prolonged needlessly. But it's, they're at 98.5. So there's no way, Rosé, that that won't make them surrender. I'm risking it. I hope I don't regret it. I think it should be fine. At 98, should be more than fine. Don't fuck up. Uh, either way, I'm gonna start moving troops over there. But it's extremely unlikely that what I'm saying is not correct. There are 98% surrender progress. 98.5. So another VP should bring them down. There's no way that won't happen. There's no way. If it was at ninety percent or so, I would still I would fear it. But ninety-eight point five, nah. They're done. They're still offering some resistance. But that's gonna end at midnight of today. There we go. This is glorious on the at midnight on the 10th of September of 1941, like historically happened, <laughs> Tibet is going to annex China. There you go. <laughs> I mean, what's left of China? Japan has a bit, very big part of it. So there we go. Our ICU and I remember this from the history group books. I mean, good one. <laughs> So our IC went to 16, the base IC, we have a total of 25, but that's going to change. There's lots of da damaged factories and infrastructure. I can't believe we only have 16 IC base. 
yeah, there's many factories that are offline due to being damaged. So you should be able to gain a few, a bit more of IC. And the manpower that skyrocketed. When all these started, we were making like 0 0.6 per month. Now we're making 8.6 per month. That's a huge change. And our, our name on the map is just gigantic. Now we're gonna do some more small campaigns, I suppose, against Click and uh, Yunnan. But that's gonna be after a small break. Um, I'll be back in a few minutes. Not men, like three or something like that. All right, I'm back. <clears throat> are, are you guys listening to me? I can't monitor OBS without risking crashing the game. 
so I muted the microphone, now it should be unmuted. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Aldion, time to build the famous Tibetan Navy. Um, I seem to remember that I abandoned all this territory and just went to invade Japan. Uh, just look at the amount of dudes they've got. I've got... how many brigades? You can quickly see them over here. One hundred and one. Ninety seven infantry for headquarters. That's quite impressive actually for such amount short amount of time. And so little I see. So I don't need the energy now. Kind of. How's the leadership? I need to start researching the anti tank weapon, anti tank weapon, anti tank uh, ammunition and muzzle and the artillery barrel and ammunition. I need single engine aircraft, I suppose. I became a fan of destroyers. I'll be able to research them. It's just already 1941 September. This game ends in what? Geez, I don't remember when this ends. This end. When does this end? 1946, 1945, end of 1945, or is it January of 46? I think it's January of 46. Anyone remembers the end date? Jeez, I'm really, really forgot about a few things about this game. Well, I just know that we, we have a very tight schedule. So, I don't think this goes, at the most it's January of 47, but I don't think it runs all the way to January of 47. So I, sir, we don't want to schedule. No, no, that's first of forty-eight. Seriously. Okay, if you say so. Are you sure? That's Hearts of Iron Four. Are you sure? Isn't that Hearts of Iron 4 or something? I can check it right now. Really quickly. I'm not doubting you, I just... I mean, in a way... Give me just a sec. I, I can instantly locate it. Albania World Conquest... Uh, no. My first Luxembourg World Conquest. I've, okay, sure. I'm just let me double check it. I, I'm not. Thank you, but I can quickly check it. I just need to see one of my videos because I play this game to death. Oh, it's like I said. It's uh, wait. Uh, 
Um, wait, this is the last one. Luxembourg. This is the original one. Hello and welcome to my newest. And my shitty microphone. Hello, I'm Marco. Welcome to. No, I can instantly see it because this was like really close. So. Money, it, fun game yeah, it's I that. Have. It's January first of January of forty-eight. You're right. I didn't remember. Thank you. I just double checking. Sorry. Sometimes the forums have misinformation. Thank you, Wes. Wesel Twelve. Thanks a lot. Sometimes the forums have misinformation. I know because I participate a lot in those forums, or I used to, and I see misinformation every every day, or I see misinformation every day. That's why I'm saying what I'm saying. So. Oh shit, this is not flickering. <sighs> it was working properly until I out tab. So now I'm going to attack Click, most likely, followed by Yunnan. And like Aljun said, I need to prepare the, excuse me, the Tibetan Navy to attack Japan on the double. Or else, if Japan declares on me, I'll instantly be put on the Allies. And that, then, that, that would be GG for a World Conquest attempt. Not sure that's what I want to do, but that's what I tried to do back in the day. Landing crafts will probably take like three months to six months to make or something. Yeah, this was this is a game one of the games that takes longer to start, and that's with the solid state drive. This game takes a long, long time to start if you have a normal drive, not a solid state one. So. Look at the amount of units. Back in the day I knew exactly how to attack these guys to kill them really quickly. Now I don't remember. Well, I need to park some dudes near their provinces and attack the VPs. Obviously.
I guess that's just it. I'm thinking too much, overthinking it, so... Strategic redeploy. Like five over there. It's just that they have a got they have a shit ton of troops. If I don't actually punch through, <laughs> if I don't actually punch through, I'm gonna be cut from supply. So yeah, I really wanna punch through them. That's for sure. Let's see how much money does a landing craft cost now and if they're willing to sell it. Six bucks. I need some artillery too. I need some artillery. I want to have another option. I, I want. I won't be able to buy. I either. I either buy the landing crafts now, or will never buy them, because no one else will be willing to sell them. After I declare war on Japan, I'll be at war with the entire Axis. So no one will send me sell me landing crafts. Unless I start aligning towards England, the, the Allies, but I think it's rather late for that because they already hate my guts. I suppose. I won't be able to build them all, I just know that I, I need the landing crafts, so they need to be in the, the building queue. Landing crafts are way better than transport ships, there's no comparison. So that was all my money. February of 42. So like I said, around six months. Let's prioritize. It's a long fucking time. On the original run, I could only build four. And 
February of 43 or something, early 43, I attacked Japan with just four landing crafts. I think they all survived, or at least the big majority of them, they survived. I managed to land. It seems I might be able to take... To build more. We'll see. So from this point on, I shouldn't have any problems with manpower. Making 8.7 per month, 8.7 per month, it's a lot. Are you gonna start streaming? This is vanilla and I have no mods whatsoever. I don't know. I'll play it until I feel like it. Probably it's just gonna be just a one-time thing. Probably I'll play it more times. Depends. It's just the reason why I stopped playing it. It's because I basically did everything there was to do. So this is a repeat of something that I did like five or six years ago and I'm trying to do it better if I can. Because I was not happy with that run. At one point I played as Japan and declared war on the entire world on the same day. Like two years into the game or something, I just start spamming wars. So I was effectively at war with everyone and their mothers. Guess who won? That was my like one of the last attempts to make to extend the replayability of this game. <laughs> it's an expression. <laughs> <laughs> Their mother's one. Okay, probably. I don't recall. You're probably right. The mother's one. I don't remember. <laughs> I've I've conquered the entire world and asked them all before the end of 1947 or for so on. Oh, the. They're in trouble. Japan just attacked the US. Or fired the decision. Alright, so um, I'm gonna need some transports, some, um, as it called, convoys. I can't trade without convoys. And I can't supply the troops without convoys. I just realized it, I've got two convoys. I was thinking about running a convoy to one of these provinces. I've got two. Yay. So that's gonna help supply these troops. Some historical decisions. Wow, this is this is all completely fucked up. Mexico is accepted into the Allies. That's a result of what I've been doing. It's really not common to see Mexico joining the Allies.
Wow, just look at the amount of dudes over there. Just look at them. That's why I've been... You know, that's why I'm using all these tubes. October of 41. I wish I could be building more landing crafts to speed things up. If I have the landing crafts. It's 27. Sure. Speed five. Oh, shoot. Here we go. I need to make militia to deal with the zombies. Or else they're gonna drive me nuts. Yeah, I did. Hello again, Tiro. Thanks, it was not very difficult. I, I use really extremely cheesy tactics. No, I have to, I kind of have to, I kind of have to, like, this is, this is, um, this is, t you're talking about Tibet. <laughs> if I don't use some sort of exploiting, how the hell could I possibly do what I'm doing? I couldn't, it's just the game doesn't allow for that, unless you... Even if you know the mechanics really, 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 really fucking well, like I used to know, and in a way I still do, it's just don't remember some numbers. Um, you know, with 0 0.6 manpower per month and with a gigantic attrition in enemy territory, how am I supposed to do something? I can't do anything. One province per one, and I had just one province per province, one one pro one division per province at the border. How am I supposed to push with one division per province? Can't be done without exploits. At least not on a, a, a timetable to to. To have a chance of conquering the world. Because the game ends in January of 48. If the game kept on running forever, then sure. We would take longer to research the text, but eventually everything would be re researched. Eventually, we would have a decent army. Eventually, we would be able to strike. But the game ends way before we have any hope of doing something like I was just talking. So, let's see their natural unity 70%. They've got. Three, four. So if you take their capital, they surrender instantly. So let's work on that. We've got 
want some parts. Their capital is protected by a river on this side. Um, 22 I see, that's not bad. 22 base I see. It takes forever to move on these places. They're gonna start... Oh shit, my capital. I have a barter with them, don't I? Will they be able to get to my capital? Before I can take theirs? That's a very good question. I don't want to find out the hard way. <laughs> that would be hilarious. I really doubt they can do that, but it's possible. They are one, two, one, two, three, four provinces away from my capital. They've got an headquarter and militia and infantry over there. So let's not risk it, send some dudes up there to the capital. Or over there. How did you not get... How did you not get the slash territories? What do you mean? slash territories this belong to japan japan won the war the first war against china and took the coastline these dudes are independent this belongs to portugal that belongs to the uk this belongs to japan because like i said they took the coast that build still belongs to France. Okay. So that should be enough to keep them busy. Let them conquer shit. Ooh. This is November of 41, look where Germany is, they just took Leningrad, they're closing on Moscow. Tactical command structure is also really, really important. I 
and it's about time to and it's that time to start researching infantry attacks again. So many things to research. Radius is really important on the short term because it provides a 10% a boost on the efficiency, combat efficiency. A single brigade will keep them busy and another one is about to pop. So it's highly unlikely that I'm gonna have any issues. Still going with specialist training, which is really stupid at this point. Okay. Looks like we're ready, depending on the amount of dudes they've got on the capital. This might just be as easy as going from here to over there. Or we might need to punch through these ones and then circle the capital to finally take it, because they've got the fort and that's a mountain. Anyway, we'll soon find out. That's supposed to pin them down. And that's supposed to help them. Just go. That's too late for that for that now. Let's just make sure this lands and they put this on the capital. It will be hilarious. I just they just need to conquer one province. This one province for Hey, why doesn't this work? I'm pressing the G oh add caps lock on. They just need to conquer this province. And then if they actually put someone on top of that, they conquer all of that. That's the only thing they need to do. Obviously, the AI doesn't know it. So, uh, uh, maybe you, what you meant is uh, why how, why did the territory stop being slashed? It's after we defeat them, they either go into exile if they belong to a faction, or they get the next. Since they did not belong to any faction, they got the next instantly. So, if you conquer enough victory points, if eventually we will achieve a 100% surrender progress. For these to be to surrender, since they've got only three points, or four points of VPs, and their national unit is at 70%. Sixty-nine point nine now. The only thing we need to do is to conquer th three of those four VPs. It's their capital. It's worth three. So they will ins ins instantly surrender. So I'm attacking from multiple directions, if needed be, I can attack from there too. Let's 
so it shouldn't take very long for the capital to fall. for their capital is started despite the terrible efficiency they should be defeated that's really nice extra leadership Structure and engineering allows me to build industrial capacity, which I don't I want to, but I might need to build infrastructure. These are all nice to have, but I can't afford them. Instead, I need to focus on stuff that that's really needed like tactical command structure these ones I need bombers not the actual bomber itself but I need to have uh, was it called small bomb or medium bomb? It's small bomb, if memory serves, where is it? Light bomb development. And I need for tactics. Well, I need a bunch of stuff. I need a bunch of things, lots of things. Well, after we conquer Yunnan, that should give us a wee bit more of, of uh, leadership and you know, basically everything needed. Let's pin that dude down. It's trying to reinforce the capital, which is gonna prolong these. And there you go. Nothing can stop us now. They're done. That puts us at 25 base IC, 40 usable. Sure. Sure, that's awesome. I hope they keep it. So we're out of easy more or less easy praise those one these ones were really easy now it's japan we need to prepare to kill japan i'm building a navy The, the IC is going to improve. Will you take Taiwan first? Uh, yeah, I, I can't get there. I will try. I will try. I will try. I don't think I can land there. But I don't think I can land. 
This might all just go south. Because Japan has a really strong navy and I've got plenty crafts. Four of them. Not yet, but that's what I suppose I'll have in a few months. So one, two, and that's it. I'm gonna focus on the landing crafts. Prioritize production. How many brigades? 102 or something? One hundred and one. I can't take on Japan with these forces, I suppose. Even without artillery. I need to think. Uh, the conscription laws do not affect the landing crafts. Just the the infantry. So even if I go went to, even if I went to a lower conscription law to say try to save one IC with regard to the upgrades, I, that was just be for the upgrades. Just help the upgrades. I'm trying to find the level. A high level port. Do we have a, a naval? That's not what I want. Jeez, I don't remember. Oh, exactly. The big ports have a bigger thingy. I remember now. So that's level 6, that's what I wanted. The smaller parts have a smaller circle. Easy, isn't it? No fancy stuff, just... Something that's simple and works. At least in my book. So we're gonna park them over there. I could strategically redeploy them just to speed it up, but that would kind of be stupid. It just consumes more supply for nothing. Since I don't have landing crafts yet. But they won't take very long to be made. It's probably the ETA for these troops is much bigger. It's gonna require more time than the landing crafts to be built. So never mind, let's strategically deploy them. I want a couple more of brigades to defend my capital. It's, it's just in case measure. I don't think it's gonna be needed. But like I said, just in case. I'll leave one division in my capital. It's going to take forever for the Japanese to get there. This is the only province needed. The only province that I need to keep. If I lose it, it's GG. So the Japanese have most of their army in, Ch in China, I suppose. And now Burma. I'm gonna strike them where they least expect, which is in the vicinity of Tokyo. And go from there, capture their supplies. So I won't need convoys to supply my troops.
I could use some artillery. It's just that it's gonna take forever to build the artillery. And the artillery, divisions with artillery take longer to move. So I really need to land the troops really quickly. Artillery slows down the division. I need to land really, 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 really quickly. <laughs> or else the, the landing crafts aren't all. They're all gonna go to the bottom of the sea. Probably. And then I'll be screwed. It's really high danger, highly dangerous. That's why I'd like a, a, few, a few more landing crafts and just four. Last time I was really lucky. I'm expecting Japan to declare war on me, war on me late 42, early 43. I don't expect them to declare war earlier than that, sooner than that. <clears throat> so it is in my... I'm going to take that time to build an, an actual navy. Then I'm going to land as many of these dudes as possi possibly can on their face. And make them surrender. I need another dude. This is a bit silly what I'm doing here. What I'm doing here. These ones need to finish sooner, so the practical will go up, and this one's production time will get reduced severely. Severely reduced. But what I was doing was making sure that all of them would be ready at the same time give or take a few days not many days just a few So these boats will bring supplies to this province. You know, when doing it like this, this is really ir that's a bit irrealistic because the supplies are supposed to be over there. So somehow, magically, they go over there and get transported to that place. So that's why I say. But even then, like who stores everything on the capital? Seriously, so that's a limitation with this supply system. But overall, this this is um, a quite nice simulation attempt, in my opinion, but not perfect, obviously. Maximum speed. I may regret it, but I need the money. Before attacking Japan, I need to buy some licenses. Sure, I think. That's just annoying. A 
Let's just uh, rename these so that I don't fuck up. We have a new general. Uh, gonna call it on division or on, on guard, whatever. Right, this is January of 42. It's another year. Let's see if we have some better minister that might increase our leadership or something like that. There you go. I think this works, but it's not important right now. I seem to recall that none of this works. There's a bug, and that doesn't really affect the practical decay at all. But don't quote me on that. I never actually tested it. I just heard people claiming that that was the way it worked. But since it was not very important to me, I didn't test it. Yep, I forgot to make the militia. One thing I know is that I can't leave these troops over here. They either need to go to Japan or they need to go to the capital. Or they desperately need to hold at least two ports or else they're fucked. Or no, there's they're fucked. If they have no connection to the capital, they're fucked. So they can't stay there. They need to go to a place where there's some actual supply. That's why I'm building a bunch of landing crafts. This province is worthless. Um, the province is worthless. Another brigade will pop in a month. We'll put it there if needed be. Play console games or only PC games? Just PC games. And they're usually more of my liking, to my liking. You know, I like strategy games. Oh shit. I remember these. It's gonna be fun. Uh, this is gonna be fun. It's my fault. Usually, if I I remember, no, as soon as I start becoming slightly bigger, I make sure I have like four or five brigades of militia to deal with this problem, so that I don't tie up uh, an actual division that I can't afford to tie up. And that's the first naval asset of the Tibetan Navy. And we got another dude. Level three.
Okay, this won't save much at this point. The... Did I... What did I just delete? An army group, the third one, right? The first one. Japan has good infrastructure. And we're gonna capture their supplies. There's a faster way to attach these headquarters to an to a to that theater headquarter, but I'm just being lazy, so in a way it's just a few extra clicks. There's a way to attach all the divisions divisions to an headquarter with a click of a button only. See this will be ready tomorrow. If I wanted I could go invade Japan right now. If I wanted to risk it. I could go invade Japan right now. I have the four landing crafts that I used in January or February of 1943 to invade Japan five years ago. I have a navy to invade Japan. I did it five years ago with just four landing crafts. Nuts, I know. It's really nuts. The AI actually... At least Japan is actually quite efficient. Uh, I mean, for an AI, it's quite efficient at uh, defending its coast. I was lucky. <sighs> How many divisions? I think this requires one. Um, bam, bam. Where is it? 14. So, a landing craft can carry 1.5 divisions if memory serves. So I got 4. I could land 6 divisions. Which is not, which are really not enough to take out Japan. So I probably must have made or tried to make multiple landings with just those four landing crafts, which is incredible. <laughs> I mean, I was definitely very, very lucky. I must have been like six divisions take out Japan. You know, it's not impossible, it's just really hard. If memory serves. Unless they have all their troops in China or elsewhere. Which can also happen. What I probably did is to capture Tokyo with six divisions. And then sneaked some more troops with the, and that with the landing crafts. It's much faster to do that when you have a port than it is when you don't have a port. May of 42. 440 bucks. 
Japan used to have a very, very f nice um, light cruisers. But Japan had the best ones. Not Japan, uh, Germany. With the highest range. Nuremberg class with the range of 3500 kilo kilometers. The Japanese, if memory serves, serves at just 3200 at the stack level or just 3300. The, oh, they've improved it. They've improved it. This is way better now. I was talking with the, at, the, at the beginning of the game. They've improved it. Sweet. But the destroyer is, is substantially cheaper to buy, to build. And they've improved their destroyer soon. To 3500 kilometers. This is more durable than that. These ones sink like rocks, but with enough of them. I was I used to be I, I used to like a lot uh, the light cruisers. But the best ship is the destroyer. I I proved that in a, in many instances and I even did a video. For the IC that it costs, this is the ship that does more for you. Overall, from every single one of them, this is the one that does more for you. And you can take that to the bank. The question, the, the thing is, they're really weak. We need to use them in numbers, in high numbers. Like always fill the combat with and pray to the R and Jesus that no none of them gets destroyed. money are we making three I need artillery oh boy <laughs> this might be a huge mistake I don't know but if you want to have any chance, we need to actually be able to defend the, and dominate the seas and defend the land, landing crafts. I think 49 destroyers could do it with a very good admiral, which by the way we don't have. We need also multi-rolls but that I can research myself the, the AI is really good at port striking so if you land say in Tokyo like you land overseas right and you, you're thinking, oh, that's a nice level 10 port, I'm gonna capture it. That's gonna help me supply my troops. Say, I don't know, you're Japan in the land, in San Francisco or something. It's, well, is this not a level 10 port? I can't see, but I think probably is, or very similar. But then you think you're gonna use it, think again. You're gonna be part strike. 
really hard and the part will be useless unless you have an air force that can defend it There are still plenty of countries in the world, I think, that we can snipe. Like, even though I'm at war with the Axis, once I secure Japan, there's no Axis forces in the Pacific. There are no Axis forces in the Pacific, nowhere near Pacific, the Pacific. Apart from CM, but those could be conquered quickly too. So that means that my possessions in Asia are secure unless, of course, the Soviet Union falls. Which usually does not happen. So there's that. If the Soviets fall, it's against my best interests, that's for sure. It's pretty darn rare. So let's hope the Soviets hold because if I declare war to Japan and the Soviet Union collapses I'm gonna have Germans at my doorstep and that's gonna be GG What I'm saying is I can afford to build a navy, just slightly, just a wee bit. We actually have resources, let's start researching this one. Your Hearts of Iron 3 just crashed. You didn't you didn't treat it properly. You were you were rough and <laughs> I'm joking, once in a while it crashes. Its stability is not its best uh, Yeah, exactly. See? See? Exactly. Your fault. <laughs> Are you gonna get the tag? Now the game does crash. I've said it a couple of times. You know, I'm old. I don't want to alt up with fear of crashing the game. I know I've crashed the game a few times that way. When strategic redeploying, they don't gain morale, or they gain it really, really, really slowly. talk about morale I'm referring to organization it's just that EU4 I played EU4 a lot and in EU4 organization is morale so that's it for these rebels and those ones too This takes forever, December of 41. It's just too, too long. 
It's just too long. I can't afford it. I can't wait that long. So landing crafts is gonna be the more I have, the more beating they'll be able to withstand before getting destroyed. So that's it. That's that's it. And then start walking. I've got one whole division to hold the line. So I really need these dudes to actually know how to fight, so... Like, the Japanese troops are not the Chinese troops. They're way stronger because Japan has more leadership. So with more leadership, they can research more techs. It has more IC, even though it focuses heavily on naval. They're tough troops, unlike the Chinese ones, which are usually less difficult to face. Like I said, I still need artillery, so my last, the last licenses that I'm gonna buy are probably gonna be artillery. It's gonna be artillery. Maybe a few airplanes too. I don't know, maybe it's September or so, we should, we, we might be able to attack them. The, the, the practical is gonna skyrocket once we build these ones. Convoys got six, nine, eleven, ten. I really need convoys, but I really need the landing craft, so but then I need the fucking convoys. I don't know if that's gonna save my ass or not. It might save my ass. If I'm lucky with the landing in Japan, things will proceed smoothly, I think. If I'm unlucky, it's GG. Because they'll completely trash me. I won't be able to stop them. 
like the world conquest uh, possibility is completely eradicated. I could still maybe survive. Maybe. It's gonna skyrocket, the cost of the boats is gonna decrease drastically, and so it's gonna be good. Let's see, a bunch of ships are about to finish, and the cost gets reduced by a fair amount. <clears throat> July of this year, gonna grab a few more ships, and I, 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 I want to, I want them. There's just one detail: my troops are completely obsolete. I guess I'll focus on the upgrades once the some more landing crafts are done. So like July at the most we will attack the Japanese. More than twice the landing crafts that I had about five years ago. Infantry warfare, top priority again. This, these upgrades are instant, they don't require IC, so they're totally worth it. I mean, the ones that require IC are also worth it, but that's instant. I'm struggling with IC. This needs to be prioritized because eventually it's going to give me divisions of five brigades, which is which uh, it's around twenty percent increased firepower. Sure. So, by 1st of August we attack, can't wait more than that, if, if um, it's scary if I wait, and it's scary if I don't. <laughs> It's scary because if they attack me, and they might attack me, I'll be instantly put on the allies and then it's gonna suck. The entire game is ruined. 
If I don't wait, my, all my landing crafts get destroyed. The campaign is ruined for obvious reasons. 1000 cargo capacity of 600. Hey, well, who knows? Maybe we can take everything at the same time. The troops just became easily better by by having by researching that. We're finally researching the piercing tech for anti tanks. Hello, gay and angel of death. Welcome. Nice to see you. I'm about to go conquer Japan or die trying. It's I, it's really possible that I'm going to die trying. So I need to prepare, sorry it's gonna take a bit, I'm gonna ch search for the more, the highest experience brigades, do I, can I see it, I think I can, can I, don't remember, I think I can. I thought I could. Strength type, organization, cores. I can. I can see the maximum or get the organization, but I can't see the experience. But I thought I could. Um, I see, I'm seldom. I'm misremembering it. I was gonna say I sell. Oh, there you go. I seldom misremember these things. See, I sell. I'm, you know, this was one of those things that I was so certain I could that it just didn't seem right. There you go. I can see it. So seventeen. Why is this important? It's because because I'm gonna I'm gonna do a not key for them. So these are the ones that are going to strike Tokyo so that the battle takes as as least the least amount of time possible because we're, we're on a time schedule. If we don't take Tokyo like really 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 quickly everyone dies due to lack of supplies. So anyway, I need a small break. I'll be right back.
It's easy to find leaders, it's not very easy to find the brigades. So, I guess I'm gonna have to click them. It's weird. Are you... Um, is my voice getting through? Or is this me too? Okay, thank you, Flatline Badger. So... We, with generals, we click it and the game brings it straight to the bloody thingy person. But not this one. But it did give me the name of the division, so... Which makes it easier. <clears throat> the 26th Infantry Brigade, the 26th Infantry Brigade. Am I blind? Whatever, let's just click the thingy. Never said this UI was perfect. I think that's it, that's our best unit, so I want to outkill them. In order for them to spear out the attack. So control, uh, control two, control three. I'm gonna give them the best leaders that I've got. Yeah, remember the way to give them leaders without screwing the organization. It's just to these. If there's any leader available, the game will auto assign it, assign the leader to the division. If we do it any other way, we're gonna lose half of the division organization. So I do remember some of the tricks. Attached to the tier third quarter. Good. So they don't know. I have an odd key for them, so they're easy to locate. The Italians are getting their asses kicked. They lost North Africa. Finally, the brigades arrive. Ooh, the Japanese invade Australia. Interesting. Okay, the invasion of Japan is about to start. Now. So one of our first of August, I will invade with another probably four 
many crafts, at least on the 2nd of August I'll have the four, if not sooner. I guess not. That's because the practical is already pretty darn high, so we don't see huge jumps. There's a diminished returns. But we still see improvements. You see it. We saved the day. Okay, let's see. This this way is 1010. This has enough for 1020. This is extremely risky, so I'm gonna actually wait until August the 8th because I will have a spare landing craft. I guess I could ditch an headquarter, but I only have one, so... That doesn't save a lot, that saves like 10 or something. I like to bring a few extra landing crafts, just in case. So I'm waiting until the 8th. <clears throat> so let's buy the last the last things from Japan or even Germany. I got twenty something landing crafts, right? Seven plus yeah, I've got twenty four. It's not a huge uh, land, a huge thing, but um, well, it allows me to land 100 brigades at once. Uh, more than that, actually, probably more like 140 or 150. Uh, no. I don't know, 140 or something like that. If none of them gets destroyed. I need artillery. And I need anti-tanks. And I need airplanes. So let's go check them out. Tank 6, Artillery 7, I suppose uh, Germany should be more advanced, at least with the, I, well, they seem to be similar, usually Germany is way more advanced. So I'm probably sticking with Japan because they're, it's cheap to buy from them, cheaper. Wow, that's gonna take all my money. That's gonna take all my money. I could just spam anti-tanks, they're really cheap to build. It increases my practical really quickly and I research everything really quickly and I catch up really quickly and... I would like to have some spearheads, so at least 12 artillery. Uh, 
Uh, five... No. I think if memory serves, it compensates to attack with six divisions. Or does it... I might use spearheads where like five art, five infantry, five divisions of two artillery, of two infantry plus three artillery, or two infantry, two artillery, and one anti tank. So for that, I need to attend. <clears throat> Let's buy 20. But this is going to be dreadfully expensive to build. Whatever. What the fuck are you... Okay, Germany's just occupied everything. Uh, Vichy probably la lost something in North Africa and German Germany triggered K Antoine or something and took back the the former French territory. So yeah, we're about to go attack Japan, but first I need stuff. Hilarious, isn't it? We buy the weapons from them to attack them. The weapons that we are buying from them we're gonna use to attack them. I think it's hilarious. I don't know, the anti-tanks anti are cheaper to build and make the infantry divisions less shitty when facing armor. They're probably more important than artillery is because of the piercing mechanics, the way it works. If you can't pierce, your units will do off damage to the enemy. That's extremely severe. So I've got 100 infantry brigades, give or take, when that when I have superior firepower, that's going to translate into... <clears throat> so, 10 divisions, 50 divisions, so I would need 50 anti-tanks, can I afford it? I guess I can. The last one is going to be the aircraft. I'm going to build the anti tanks first to level to increase the practical. So, if I was not an idiot, I would have remembered that. And now I have to. Now I have a bunch of clicking to do, because I'm an idiot. Same thing for the ships. For the ships, in my opinion, pays off to build just two of them. Because then the practical will increase making the ships cheaper. Then we build another two, or three, and so on. If you can't afford, it's better to just build them all, like, as many of them as possible, but trying to save I see... I build two, probably should build just one, but that would take forever to have the ships done. 
Then I'm gonna build the anti tanks. And I need some more infantry eventually. <laughs> That's a very nice. Uh, That's a very nice uh, emo tacos. Really cute. That's me derping, right? <laughs> That's my face. Okay, so the last landing craft, August 8th. Let's focus on that and on the last sh last things we need from Jap the Japanese, the airplanes. That's very, very cute. I usually go with, with the multi rolls because, well, as the name says, they're multi roll. So they can do the job as of fighters and bombers pretty darn well I mean they're not as good as tactical bombers for tactical strikes but tactical bombers can abso will absolutely be destroyed by fighters if they don't get if they don't have protection the these ones are the opposite they they do well against fighters for the most part and they do a very efficient job at bombing so all in all that that's that, those are the best ones I used to do some giant stacks of multi rolls and by themselves they, they would win the war as long as it could hold the line as long as it could hold the line for enough time for the multi rolls to do their job they would absolutely destroy the the enemies with enough of them. So now I have everything that I need in the queue to give me to start to give me a, a good jump start for the research. You're, you're probably thinking, wow, with 40 IC and all of that. <clears throat> yeah, but uh, the IC we can, if we manage to annex Japan, we'll have a shit ton of IC, like probably around 100. So the end, as the practical improves, the price for these things will decrease substantially. We are already starting the research of single engine aircraft and artillery, as you've seen, and the anti tank. Still gonna go to the top of the queue because this is really, 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 really important. Here we go. I think this it's very useless over there now. We go to the capital and the crazy opera the crazy invasion of Japan is gonna start 25 divisions should suffice if I play well if I don't fuck up <coughs> it will suffice Wish me luck. I'm gonna need it. Thank you. And you use the right emote and all. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Zero skill admiral. Wait. I need to know that. 
because I need to react in, in time, in due time. This is control one, control two, control three. Did I ride the planes? I did, right? Yeah, okay, I'm tired, I suppose, becoming tired. Oh boy. <coughs> oh boy. They didn't derp, they've got like a big part of their fleet right there. I need to add some, um, these dudes are undersupplied. They're undersupplied, I need to run another convoy. It's stupid. Can I create? I think I can. No, I can't. I can't. I could create one in the vicinity. To Fuzao. Whatever the name is, sorry for the pronunciation. I haven't started it yet. I'm about to do it. Oh shit, they're under supplied. What the fuck? The divisions are not under supplied. But the uh, navy is, so that's absolutely stupid to start a war now. I need for I need to wait for the supplies. Crap. I'm gonna move I'm gonna move back, sorry, but that's so stupid that I can't conceive of starting an invasion with the navy undersupplied. It's just a question of time, it's, the supply is gonna arrive. Crap. Idiot. It's arriving, it has to arrive. I'm also an idiot, I should have touched this to the... No, I'm rusty. I'm rusty, so this is fully supplied now. Yeah, next shrine. I didn't restart. I just moved fast. Okay, they've got three dudes over here. That's good. 
I just wanted to see how many. Uh, no one here, so fingers crossed. Oh boy. So you want this to go really quickly, so... Actually, let's just do it this way. Everyone lands over there. You land over there. You land over there. Uh, so for the best, we're now at war with Japan and the entire Axis. That was an headquarter. Oh, for fuck's sake, what are you talking about? Seriously? Oh, this is so bad. They're not landing. They're not landing and they're gonna land out of supplies. Some of them are not landing. This is so fucking bad. This should have been a quick in and out operation. Instead, it's like a blunder, almost. Now I have to take these divisions out of here because I was lucky to not get intercepted not and not even bombed. If jeez, um, at, at midnight these guys will probably have the supplies needed. But by then, I'm probably gonna get trashed. The landing crafts will get trashed. Let's see. Getting bombed, not a big deal. Luckily, the landing crafts are still somehow. Oh, they were bombed. They were bombed. We can't shoot. We can't set, see the air map mode. These ones were bombed. Look at the string. Well, we managed to land. Let's just go for the encirclement before something goes south. That's what I should have done. But I thought I could take Tokyo really quickly. Due to the very high experience of the units that I've used. And AI derpiness. I can't do that directly, so I need to go around. If I land the majority of the troops over there, these these would go faster. But this is not exactly China, so it should be alright. With regard to the timing needed for the troops to move, the time needed. See, we're getting bombed. And already lost. I didn't lose anything yet. Oh shit. Oh shit. That's so bad. Shit. Can I retreat to a port? 
How does this work? <laughs> I need to press that button. Oh, that's bad. I knew it. I, I, I pushed my luck. Well, we deliver the payload. So... I find this way more interesting to watch than, than current day Hearts of Iron 4. But that's just me. Even this is, is more... But that's just me, so whatever, it's just a personal opinion. We've lost one ship so far and we're likely to lose more. Can you please just retreat? Can I retreat taking apart? I don't remember. I don't think I can. Retreat, damn it. Yep, just gonna retreat to the adjacent province and I'm fucked. Because they're gonna pursue me and trash me. The only thing I've got going for me is that. Uh, they don't have morale, most of them, organizations, so the battle is gonna be... S it won't last long, maybe, just maybe, we can escape. I'm gonna be bombed all the way, though. <laughs> See? And um, these supplies won't last forever, just saying. So that encirclement needs to happen. I'm pressing shift, why are you not working? Get caught. There might even be poor strike. I don't see any airplanes. Well, I do. Will they part strike me? I need to pay attention to that. What about the China theater? I have completely abandoned it. I can't defend it. So I'm just defending my capital with a total of five brigades. Well, six, four, four infantry and one militia. So I'm I'm betting everything on a swift victory against Japan in Japanese territory. And as you can see, it's starting very very well. Of course, I'm being sarcastic. Like I said, these dudes are not the Chinese, their troops are up to date, they probably have artillery, at least some of them do. It's gonna be ugly. You just sit tight, wherever you are, sit tight. I 
Well, my friend, it's not going very well. We need to take Tokyo before they reinforce it. Because we only have supplies for a few days. Oh, that's great. We just grabbed veteran army. I bet we fought like 200 battles or something. 250. Yeah, I'm gonna see a lot of that. Okay, it looks like it's going our way. I need to check the landing crafts, like I said, need to check if they're getting bombed, if they're getting bombed, I need to move them elsewhere. I also need to cancel the convoys, because I'm gonna get annihilated. I'm importing fuel, f are you... Seriously? Seriously. The, they pay for the convoys, so that's fine. So we have supply. Oh my fucking god. That's so bad. I told you I needed to conquer this shit really quickly or else it would be GG. Well... That's the opposite of quickly. Come on. Oh my fucking god. Come on, damn it. After this battle, if no one else reinforces, you should almost instantly take Tokyo. Unless these guys stop moving, and they might. They stop moving. We captured Tokyo, for fuck's sake. That was so close. Jeez. That was really close. We've got 37,000 supply to conquer Japan. That was so close. I gambled everything, so yeah, could have went south. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But uh, we completed this stage, so we're not. We're, we completed it, we landed. Now we have to defeat the Imperial Japanese Army so on their territory. But I need some water, I'll be back in a, few, in a couple of minutes.
The AI is taking advantage of a massive stacking penalty. That's fine. Why is the AI building supplies like there's not tomorrow? So that was too close, indeed, but we've captured Tokyo, now we need to defeat them, which doesn't seem very easy to do, since because I don't have artillery, and it looks like they have a bunch of troops over here, these are, these are the elite troops, I'm not sure the, the name, uh, but it's their elite troops. The one with the star, it's an elite uh, brigade or division. I'm gonna put them all in, in Tokyo, which might be a big mistake. But I'm gonna start pinning them down. That's planes 4 to 1 or 3 to 1. That's ills, pin them down. Even if you don't win, we need to pin them down. Because we're all stuck here in a very uh, short. No, like, we're stuck. We can't be stuck with so many divisions on the same spot. Because in Hearts of Iron 3, there's one thing called sucking penalty. If you have too many divisions on participating in on a battle, and if they're all on the same spot, your enemy might take advantage of it, not just attack, taking advantage of like I don't even know how many how much sucking penalty I have right now. Let's speed this up, nothing's going on. Like I said, I need to pin them down. Can I attack from there? I can't, so pin them down. So that we can break uh, free elsewhere. We have a net quarter that can join that fight. This one. <clears throat> so they're pinned down, which means they can't move. They're being attacked while they're being attacked. And while the battle lasts, they need to. They, they're forced to stay there. That's pinning them down. That's what it means in this game. That might, if I had some mobile forces, that would allow me to encircle and destroy, most likely. But I don't have any mobile forces. I am, however, going to try to encircle and destroy. That's the objective of this movement. Let's see if we can do it. Oh shit, it's going too fast. It's just wasting a good opportunity, damn it. Now I am pinned down.
I mean, I have to, I have to manage these manu manually because the AI is gonna derp. I don't need supplies. It's guaranteed that the AI is gonna derp. Usually, the, the AI does a very good job. It's just that right now I don't need supplies, and I know the AI is gonna make supplies. I need upgrades, and I need pin down these, and I need um, upgrades, and I need. Um, Reinforcement. So I just the pincer. This pincer was supposed to go go like that. It would be attacked while being attacked. It would move, and this time that it's being these dudes are being attacked, they would still be moving towards that province. As it stands, they're idle. So, which uh, drastically reduces my chances of pulling off an encirclement like I wanted. But it is what it is. That's why I'm not using artillery, because if I used artillery, I would have 0% chance of actually making encirclement. I think. With just infantry, I can pull off some encirclement, because they move faster than artillery does. We have a fair few divisions here so far. This should be able to move soonish. 15 hours. I need to add some war goals. This war is going for almost for half a month now. I can't remain idle, so I'll just move it. Maybe you'll make it. Looks like you'll have a shot. They're not bar striking. It's not going very well, but I didn't expect it to go very well. 
I just want to pin them down. I'm attacking across a river into a mountain. The objective is just to prevent them from moving, like I explained. Then go from behind and cut them off. <coughs> exactly what I'm doing. If I manage to get to this province and that province, they're dead. Because they'll be cut off from supply. And that's all that I want. <laughs> or else this is gonna last forever. Because I don't have that many troops here. Okay, they're fucking dead now. Unless someone pins me down. Jeez, I allow them to recover. You can say it, I'm an idiot. I forgot about him, I was waiting for the attack delay to be over and then engage these guys. But I forgot, which gave them time to regain organization. I should be able to withstand an attack. They're gonna attack Tokyo, probably. And those, they're the ones spinning me down now. But, and trying to escape the encirclement. I, I, I talked to the person at Paradox back in the day, and they said that... I don't remember the circumstances, but they said that the fact that the AI in Hearts of Iron 3 tried to escape encirclements was like a fluke, it was not intentional, but the truth is they tried to escape encirclements. Uh, it's risky, but I'm gonna try to pin them down again. It's worth it if we actually manage to destroy the divisions and we've got like five or six divisions encircled or enveloped, about to be encircled. What's your division composition? Right now it's just artillery, it's just infantry. I couldn't afford anything else. Quite a nice fluke indeed. Exactly. And Tokyo is really high develop high, high uh, infrastructure, so these guys will regain the organization rather quickly. Just create Avog, I suppose. There we go, encircled. Now they're going to try to break free. See? This is the elite division that I was talking about. Now I'm gonna fuck them up. Starting by this one. I suppose...
being attacked. Good luck with that. The AI in Hearts of Iron 4 was more than happy to be encircled and destroyed back in the day when I played it. Okay. I don't think that's gonna work. They break out a lot more now, okay. But I don't play it for a long time. Just waiting for some attack device to be over, then hit them really hard. Because Despite being encircled, they have a very good defensive position. And so do I. It's gonna take forever for them to get, to get to my capital. If they I understood the concept of victory points, they would go straight to the capital, but it doesn't understand it, so... Like I said, I'm waiting for the attack delay to be over. And maybe for this unit to arrive. Then, bam. Kill them. And smash some... At least five divisions. <coughs> That's another division destroyed. That's called overrun. I've just overrun the garrison division. They're so slow that it's easy to overrun them. Just probing. Good. I'm glad I probed. Let's go to speed 4, nothing's going on. Now something's gonna go, gonna happen. You attack, you attack. And sometimes the islands that tries to do amphibious invasions, they might try to take Tokyo back. So I have to be careful with that. Should be massive. I love seeing this shit. It's been a while. I mean, it's not the encirclement that's massive. The penalty that these dudes are suffering is ma is massive. Envelopment penalty, encirclement penalty, and that's because I haven't attacked from this side. Wait until I attack from that side. They're still trying to break out. Even though the penalty for my units is also extreme, I'm attacking with more than... with almost three times their numbers. And they have a multiple combat penalty. Okay. 
Okay, let's just disable that. I know I'm gonna lose a shit ton of provinces. Jeez, I'm asleep. Why don't you, why don't you go over there? Looks like there's no one to oppose you. This is stupid, or might be stupid. Can I? Where can I cross? I can't cross there, so it's not stupid. Not as much as it looked to be. I just want to clear this area. Be sure there's none, no one over there, so that I then can move south. What makes your combat with so much higher? It's because of attacking from multiple directions. If that's what you're talking about. I'm attacking from... So from here, that's 10. From here, it adds another 5. Another 5 makes 20. 25, 30. And since my divisions are all 4 width, there was room for 2 width. I ended up fighting with 32. Now we just crush them like a bug. Thirty-five and the massive, massive envelopment and encirclement. That's a minus fifteen. So there you go. Destroyed. I don't know. Five divisions. There's these two that are going. Retreating. <clears throat> I suppose I can now create a theater headquarter for this area and I will interfere if needed be. I'm just gonna let the AI conquer Japan. Oh, uh, you're a bit confused. I'm slightly confused. <laughs> Where's the militia? ETI September of 40. No, that's bullshit. That's to the next province. <coughs> Excuse me.
So let's paint this area, give it to Tibet at quarter, on guard at quarter. Let's attach this one just in case they are derps. And basically that's it. I'm gonna allow the AI to take charge. Blitzing. Go grab that. Don't have troops. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Yes, you do. No, maybe this is so premature. Uh, this is probably premature. This is probably premature. Let's just not do that. Not yet. I think it can do it. But... There's another encirclement going on. Small one, but an encirclement nonetheless. It's actually three. Another two going on, actually. With this one, three. This one is gonna get either overrun or encircled. I think it's gonna get. It's gonna be both. Or, you know, either encircled and destroyed or overrun. Either way, it's dead. And same thing for that one. Once these ones are done, I'm gonna let the AI take charge, simply because this is gonna go faster in real life. I won't be managing this personally, I will just oversee it. The AI is gonna send dudes up there, so let's just do it. The more effective way is to not have two directions of attack. Like, for the AI to take charge. So if I have some units, I make an headquarter over here and it pushes that way. And then I make another one and it pushes that way. Or else they're gonna sh shuffle troops back and forth. And that's really bad. Destroyed. That one's probably gonna get overrun or destroyed. If the, like, I don't honestly like clicking, I don't, I really dislike clicking, it's just busy work. So, if the AI does the job decently well, 
I will allow the AI to do it because it's, some of these uh, cam you know campaigns or invasions are just some of them are formality. And then it's not exciting for me to manage. It's just busy work. The landing, the, the original battle, some encirclements to ensure we have supremacy. That's fun. Then clicking, go there, go there, etc., etc. And you know, there's no encirclement going on. There's nothing, and it's just busy work. And the outcome is not really at stake anyway let's detach this one and finally automate the thingy Wait, say, go conquer shit. That's just bullshit. Just do it. I think that's it. Don't get me wrong, the eye is also a dart by comparison with the human, but it does a decent job, like I said before. If I. But I will oversee it. So now I can just sit back and enjoy. Let's prioritize upgrades. Let's remove that objective. It's not an objective. Why are you waiting? See, don't remember seeing so passive. This seems like Hearts of Iron 4. Maybe it's someone else already has the orders or something, waiting for more dudes. I don't agree with that, so just move it. What the hell's going on? Sometimes the headquarters are bugged and the units just fall asleep. Just like in Europa Universalis 4. And uh, the base, as far as I know, for Europa Universalis AI was from this game. So, in this game, there were circumstances where the, the units fall asleep, just fell asleep, just like in Europa Universalis. They still fall asleep these days, as far as I know. Not as much as before, but they do. Now money is basically relevant unless I can trade with, with the US. So let's get on with it. Since I'm at war with the axes. Looks like I lost 
Oh, fuck me. I guess I was lucky. No, Leningraft got destroyed. really a derp sometimes like with this attack but at least it was not passive now it's gonna retreat you wanna see it it didn't yeah actually it actually did yeah I remember this shit Sometimes it was suicidal, but like I said, it does a decent job. By comparison, Hearts of Iron 4, the, where the AI was actually su suicidal when I played it, when I played, this is the Hearts of Iron 3 AI is, is cautious. It just doesn't, um, I mean, it doesn't attack with, usually with terrible, terrible, terrible odds. It doesn't. And we'll continue pushing as long as we have the, the we're careful and we repaint the area in order for the, to speed spell it out for the AI and tell them, okay, this is just your area, it's are, are just these provinces, deal with, with it. If you let them, let it keep up a huge area, it's gonna just leave some units behind to garrison some useless VPs or some more or less useful ports. So I usually repaint the areas so that it keeps all the troops in the front line and keeps pushing. I wonder if I'll be able to cross. There's one VP right there. Okay, this is one of the things that I would love, and then the I derps like this shit. Yeah, I remember this shit too. <sighs> this is one of the things that I would love to have in Europa Universalis. I've always missed it, which was a warning for when the AI tried to invade me. There's no warning, the AI just invades, and that's it. What the fuck? Stupidly retreating from a battle where the odds are on their favor. Idiots, idiots, fucking idiots. See that this is this was another very big problem back in the day. Really retarded. I 
and then they landed and, and instantly they, they, they I would try to, to kill them. But that's just stupid. It should do everything within its power to prevent the landing. It retreated with some four units. And me with just one division, I'm holding them off. Like I said, sometimes they do naval invasions, and um, here's the proof. They're trying to retake their, their territory. It would be um, amazing if we could annex Japan, but most likely Japan is going to go into exile, which is going to be a big problem. But anyway, I needed to attack it. If I didn't attack them, they would attack me. Now because I play this game a lot, so... They would attack me. So I'm really spelling it out for this AI. You see the shuffling between fronts, which is terrible. That's why when you have two fronts, you need to just make one headquarter to push in that direction, or else the ADUC is gonna be off the charts, the level of ADUC. With all the back and forth. Anyway, it saves me worry. Sixteen days for another war goal. Hi there. Can we? Looks like Japan is having issues with supplies. How come? Where is their capital? Oh, that's why. They've got two VPs right there. Nagasaki and um, this one should suffice to, to annex them, to defeat them. Oh, for fuck's sake, I pressed shift, this keyboard is fucked up. Annoying. The shift key on my left is, is, is not in good shape. That's the one that I'm used to pressing. 
That's probably why it's not in good shape then. But I, I, I was pressing it. I was trying to shift Q to some orders. Now just move it. So as long as we keep painting the map, pointing them in the right direction, they do a, the AI does a decent job. If we ignore that, then it's gonna be frustrating to use. Because this AI can be an idiot. That's near Russia, I think. These. Is it? Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Where is it? It's political map mode. Yes, it is. Okay. So I, I don't really want that. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Suppose I want something more useful. Suppose that's more useful. Because that's basically really poor and there's nothing besides a very small part or two. Oh, and there's some oil, but that belongs to, to the Russians, the Soviets. So they're about to surrender. Let's just hope we're lucky. I was looking for the, the region map mount. There you go. That, this is the one. And suckling it is. Thanks again. The blue tiger. And that should be the end of Japan, at least as we see them. Let's hope we actually annex them. There's a chance we might annex them. It's unlikely, but there's a chance. I didn't take the, the, the province yet. Okay, we still need this one. Hi there. I see the AI already has a unit going to that. I just wanted to speed it up, speed it up. I think this will do it. If not, I'll invade Taiwan. Oh, it, it must it must be enough. There goes Persia. Very big struggle. In Russia. The Germans are really kicking ass. Like I said, this really made them stronger. Annexing these three countries. Unless their manpower crumbles. Well... The Soviets are nowhere near surrendering yet, but they didn't lose Moscow. And how about Stalingrad? Okay. 
We'll see. The fate of the Soviet Union and my fate hangs in the balance. It depends on... Please tell me I have an next him. No. Jeez. Oh, what the fuck? What the fuck? The Philippines just ruined my map. Allied with Tibet, the puppet of Tibet. Oh shit. There you go. Can't conquer the Philippines. The, the Whatever. The Philippines just became my puppet. This is a bug. This was a bug. I should have checked it. Somehow the Philippines became I know probably because I liberated the Philippines and all of a sudden it becomes my puppet. I don't remember. I just remember this as a bug. I've seen this before. So So for me to annex Japan, I need to defeat all majors in the Axis. That means to kill Germany and Italy. If this does fall... Let's just add the war goals. If Can you burn in this game? I can, but I won't. It's annoying because there's no re way to get rid of puppets. Why can't I add the, or the Conquer War goal? Because they're conquered, that's why. What a mess. Oh my god, the mess. The mess. Anyway, I think this is a good place to leave this campaign so much cleaning that I'm gonna have to do and I need to go conquer Manchuku and Mankuku I can't wait for the for the partisans the rebels I had, I had some hopes that I could annex Japan it would have been way better than these but whatever We've got 107 IC available. We have way more leadership than, <laughs> look, 22.51. It's just outstanding. And all, a, a gigantic improvement. Anyway, I'm gonna see I want to play another a different game in a few minutes just because um, no a subscriber uh, many tacos decided to and, and so very big supporter of the channel um, asked me if I wanted to play a, a totally different game um, where everything serves as an excuse to kill me so it's so I don't know maybe it's gonna be fun I didn't play it yet so that's what I'm gonna play it's called Reventure I'll continue this uh, some other day